Come on the show tonight. It's going down. Listen, it's the smoke show. It's, 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 it's definitely, definitely, definitely going down all the way. And if you don't know, it's going down. It's going all the way down. Tonight, make sure you call everybody and tell them, say, hey, y'all need to come make sure y'all take this show out tonight. Because it's going to be crazy. It, it's going to be crazy tonight. So, if you... It's a smoke show tonight, all night tonight. Man, we talk about Lamar Image. I told you. We talk about uh Steve Wilkes. I told you. We talk about the All-Star. Was Kenny Smith right or was he wrong? Man, we also talk about Caitlin. I told you. It's not I told you show for Kenny Jones tonight. It's the smoke. And I want all you guys to I might call, I might literally go and read comments that we did on Facebook a year ago when we talked about these things. I got Benny to hold me accountable. Man, Bo might be showing up a little bit later in the show. Y'all know what it is. It's the King Bo Show. You know what you need to do? You need to show me the list. Let's go. Show me the list. Show me the list. Everybody talk about the best. Everybody talk about they talk about us. We are just walking the guy we trust. As long as our name is We good. Show me the list. Show me the list. Everybody talk about they the best. We the best. Yes. Everybody talk about they talk about us. We are just walking the guy we trust. As long as our name is in the book. We good. What's going on? What's going on, everybody? I hope everybody's having a great, 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 great day. I hope everybody's having a great day. Woo! Woo! It's a great day. Hey, I hope you guys are having a great day. It's going to be the show tonight. It's going to be that show tonight. I'm telling y'all, tonight is going down. Tonight is going down. You know what I'm saying? It is, I'm, so, hey, I'm so excited for tonight's show. I've been ready. I've been waiting on this. Because we got receipts. We can it. It's the reason. I don't Great video. Benny, listen, listen. Tonight, Benny, it's the receipt show. We got receipts tonight, Benny. I got receipts telling people, showing people what's going to happen and what stuff that I tell you, I said before. You, Benny, listen. They were telling me, check this out. They were saying that I literally didn't like black people. That's what, that's what they were saying. King, you don't like black people. That's, that's what they were telling me. They were telling me, King, you do not like black And I was like, what? You do not like black people. I was like, how? How do I not like black people? But that's what they would say. They said, King, you literally do not like black people. But I'm like, what? How is this possible? How is this even possible that you guys can even open your mouth to even say anything like this or say anything that's pl plausible like this, baby? I don't understand how they can say this, baby. But they say I didn't even like black people because of some of my stances, because I was calling out certain things. But it's, it's all right. Tonight is going down. I want everybody to log in. I want you to call all the people. Call them all. I'm going to start calling names. Don't make me start calling names, Jackie Jackson. Don't make me start calling names, Tony Tiss. Don't make me start calling sis. Don't make me start calling names, Shannon Howell. Don't make me start calling names, Eddie Carswell. Don't make me start calling names. I'm telling you guys, we call it names tonight. It's the smoke show. I want all the smoke. Phone lines are open. 478 569 6161. Let me come down. I'm so excited, video. I got I to gotta come down. You know what I'm saying? Shots fired tonight, smoke show. But uh, before I go, listen, I gotta introduce my my, my, my guest host tonight. Brother, the Mr. Benny Jones, uh, councilman, great man, all around husband, my brother, man, uh, man. Listen, I appreciate you coming back on with me tonight and uh, spending some time, spending some time with me. I, I I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I appreciate you spending some time with me tonight and come back on. How you doing, sir? Doing great. Doing wonderful. Doing wonderful. It's a privilege to be here. 
I'm glad you're here tonight because you know this is this is one of the nights. I, 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 you know, the, you know that song. Y'all gonna make me lose my mind up in here, up in here. This is one of the nights that y'all, I might lose my mind up in here. You know what I'm saying? Because this is one of the nights that things is gonna go crazy, right? It's gonna be, it's gonna be a phenomenal, sh phenomenal show tonight. And uh, we are, we are ha having a little bit of technical difficulties. Um, I, I am noticing that we're having some technical difficulties. I think I know what's going on. So if we have to be, if we have to restart the show, we will do it. I, I have an idea what's going on, but it's all good. We're going to, you know, listen, we need you guys to kind of get, get, uh, we need to promote, uh, we need the sponsors, the sponsorships to kind of get aboard and get along because a lot of this is coming out of, um, uh, uh, out of our own resources and doing this. And sometimes when we do it somewhat on the level that we try to do it and in the profession that you kind of do it, you kind of get bogged down and kind of get bogged a little bit down with, you know, the technology and, you know, within the budget that you're working with. But that's all right. That's all right. No excuses. No excuses. And when I say no excuses, when we get into these topics tonight, I don't want any excuses whatsoever, baby. I don't want I don't want any excuses tonight, baby. You ready? Ready. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready out there? Let's go ahead and get into the top, the first topic of the night tonight. Listen, listen, listen. If you did not know, if you did not know what was going on last week. A couple of last week before the Super Bowl, we had an issue where Lamar Jackson won his second MVP. Second MVP. This is the second MVP. He won a second MVP. Uh, second season MVP. And with the second season MVP, him being a two-time MVP, the question start going out is why hasn't Lamar Jackson already started to uh why hasn't he already started to uh, get some of the uh, promo? Why why hasn't he gotten some of the uh, uh, advertisement dollars? Why don't you see, is Lamar Jackson the face of the NFL? And it's an interesting conversation, an interesting, interesting dynamic. And I want to play this video for you guys. This is what was said this week by Keisha Johnson on another podcast, a very all the smoke podcast. This is what he had to say. NFL right now to you. It's Patrick Mahomes. By far. Yeah. See that see here's the thing. Lamar Jackson should get the opportunities. Mm -hmm. But we live in a corporate world. And I don't necessarily know when they look at Lamar, if they look at him and say, he could be the face for a number of reasons. Okay, he deep south. So they already, you know how they Florida. They, how we ah, talk, yeah, yeah. That's how they are because in 2019, he won the MVP. Yeah. Have you seen him on any commercial? No. Nope. About to win it again this year. And he going to win it again. That's the messed up part about it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But when you bring it to the attention, people get, they get all, they don't want to talk That's about right, that. Right. Truth it's hurt. like, well, wait a minute, man. Hold on. This dude, two-time MVP in six years. <laughs> Meanwhile, the dude that we all keep hyping up, Keep going home and Josh Allen, but y'all keep putting him on EA Sports and putting him on this and putting him on that, and he keep getting sent to the crib. So you 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 look at it and you say, how could this be? This can't be this way this year with him. They've got to figure out because they did it in basketball with Little Penny, right? Word. Penny didn't ego. like to talk, mm. but Nike got so creative. I love this. That's that a they call. figured up. That's, huh? that's a great call. I yeah. love that idea. Yeah, think about it. They figured it. out because when you think about Lil Penny, and obviously this is when we all first started playing and becoming professionals and making money and whatnot. We looked at that. They brought in Tyra Banks and Chris Rock. So they bought a, a beauty in, then they bought a funny man in, and Penny didn't really have to do a whole lot, which is okay. They need to figure that out with Lamar because they say Lamar doesn't have a personality, so to speak. Like he's not outspoken type, you know, uh, personality. He got a little Southern twang to him. That's okay, though. If you really want to make it work, I can make it work for you in a heartbeat. I promise you. I can put the shit together if from a marketing standpoint. If you really wanted to do it, though. If you really wanted if you to really do it. If you really wanted to do if it. If you really wanted to do it, mm -hmm. I can put him in all the little State Farm commercials and yeah, everything else. Yeah. If you really wanted to do it. Yeah, that's the because thing. think about it. What MVPs in any league? Not doing that. Not doing commercials and stuff. Not doing anything. In any league. Some do. Not. Nah. 
But that's what we get into today. Why isn't Lamar Jackson getting the ad dollars? Why isn't Lamar Jackson finding themselves in these conversations? And I try to tell you guys real quick. Before I break, because I want to get the camera solo on me. I'm going to bring Benny in in a second. I know he's going to probably have a different opinion than I have. But I want, I want, I want to bask in this. About a year ago, I made a comic and I made a post. And I said, I think Lamar Jackson, I haven't seen Lamar Jackson in the suit. Since he was drafted. And everybody went, 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 went haywire when King was like, hey, I hadn't seen him in the suit. And, I, and that was during the time when Lamar Jackson was going through his contract. That was during the time when Lamar Jackson was going through, uh, didn't have a contract. He was going through his contract negotiations. And all this is going on about his mama negotiating his contract. Everybody's giving excuses why they weren't paying Lamar Jackson the money. When we just saw... <laughs> We just saw Deshaun Watson get a $250 million guaranteed deal. And we just wondered, why is Lamar Jackson not getting this deal? And I tried to tell you guys off the rip, it was his image. I said, hey, he's an image. And they have an issue with Lamar Jackson being the face of the franchise. Oh, how no, King. It can't be that. I said, Lamar Jackson doesn't wear suits. I said, Lamar Jackson don't dress up. I said, he need to work on his image. Y'all thought, oh, he don't like black people. He, he ain't black people. Oh, he don't, he don't, he don't, he don't, he don't. He don't want us to succeed. He don't want us to win. Lamar can do where, where his head, what to wear. He want to do all that. And I was just telling tell y'all, listen, I understand what you said. You can be unapologetically black, but when you're unapologetically black, it comes to screw. When you're unapologetically black, guess what happened? Uh, you, you, you're not working for McDonald's. You're not working uh, as, a, as a fried cook. You are a phrase of a corporation. You are a face of a, of a franchise. You are a face of a business, a billion dollar corporation. And when they're sitting there investing in you and say, hey, you're going to be the face the CEO, basically the CEO of our football team on the field, of our corporation, they want to make sure that that money is well spent into someone that's not only great on the football field, but marketable off the football field. That's why when they showed the little pictures, you had Dan Prescott getting ad advertisement. You had a, 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 a uh, what what's the guy from Buffalo name? Uh, 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 uh he'll be out, What's the guy from Buffalo's name? Get Josh Allen. Josh Allen. You had Josh Allen get advertisement. You had all this going on at this time where people were sitting there saying, "Okay, cool. What's really going on?" And now we understand, and you're starting to see what's really happening. And what's really happening is as much as you want to sit there, and as much as you want to sit there and 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 and, and make excuses. All the things that I was trying to say was, listen, I understand he's the quintessential brother. He's a young guy. But when these organizations and when these uh, businesses, billion-dollar corporations, are looking for faces of their organization, it's a certain thing that they're looking for. It's a certain thing. It's a certain quality that they're looking for. And at the end of the day, I'm just saying, Lamar Jackson has to work on making sure that certain quality is there and he does, has not displayed it. And that's why organizations, advertisers, businesses, all those people overlook him. It's because they don't look at him as the face. Vinny, go ahead. Where am I right? Where am I wrong? Let me know. I don't think that's the case. <laughs> I think Lamar is getting black. Lamar has two problems. Okay. The first problem is that he's living, he's playing in an era. Let's just be real. It's going to be hard for him to be the face of the NFL when you have Patty Mack still playing. Okay. I mean, I mean, I understand, yeah, he got two MVPs. We're talking about a man with three Super Bowl rings in the last, what, four, five years? Exactly. Along with, along with two, three MVP. You know what I mean, so it's hard. And yeah, and, and they're in the same, and then both of them in the AFC. Right. It's hard. But so is Josh Allen. It's Hallow. hard. But so is Josh Allen. Now, I think the real case, let's be real, they, they, they blackballing the man. You say what you want to say. Ricky Williams didn't like to talk either, but they, they, they he got commercial dollars. Ricky Williams didn't wear no suit. Ricky Williams admitted he smoked weed. The problem you had with, 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 with the problem with uh, Lamar, okay, number one, you had a black guy that who dare, who, how dare you buck the system? Okay. You saw what we did to Colin Kyle Ka Ka Kaepernick. You saw what we did to him. How dare you buck the system and not hire an agent? How dare you make us speak? How dare you, you know, 
make us franchise you all these years because you don't you think you're not getting paid enough money, but you're not playing a whole season. Okay. So granted, Lamar had to bet on himself this year. So okay, I'm gonna come back and show y'all still can play. He did. He did. So all of that, I agree with Keyshawn. They want to make it work, they can make it work. That you see, we've seen them do it in the past. Lil Penny, great example. Like I said, Rick Williams like the top keeper. Hey, Alan Iverson just told you he was gonna be unapologetically hip hop and NBA chain and all this chain. So all that, let, let's forget about that. Let's forget. It's a lot of guys don't wear suits who did. They remarkable. So I think you were blackballing the guy because you really didn't believe him. He bet it on himself. So you were like, okay, we're gonna blackball him, push him out. The thing was, if Lamar had a bad year. Lamar had a bad year this year. Baltimore was finna, was, was finna say, yeah, everybody ready to criticize Lamar. Yeah, we told y'all, y'all shouldn't have paid him that amount of money. He wasn't worth it. That's what they was waiting on. They waiting on the brother to fail. They waiting on him to fail. Baltimore didn't believe he could be the face of their, the face of their franchise because of the fact he hadn't played. I'm forgetting, it's been a long time since he played a complete season. He hadn't put up no number. He kept getting hurt. Hey, was he really hurt last year? Let's be real. I mean, these are questions come up. Was he really hurt? So we can sit that's like, well, he's not markable, he's not this. I'm gonna keep on a little bit. They can make it work. But he was trying to black what you was trying to do a black ball the brother. Because you what how dare you show the athlete? Think, think about it now. They never want athletes to show other athletes how to be powerful. That's one of the reasons things, main thing they got against LeBron. LeBron said, I can do more than dribble basketball. Oh, I dare you do that. Same thing, Lamar. How dare you show the NFL player? Hey, man, you ain't got to hire no agent, pay that agent all that money. Keep that money in high. Hey, I'm going to go hire my mom to handle my business. Keep the thing in family. I, I, hey, I think hey. I agree with you, but I disagree with you on two things. The one, Ricky Williams. Ricky Williams, I, if, I could lie, if I could borrow a line for Cat Williams, I mean, for Cat Williams about Ricky Williams, Ricky Williams, they, got, they gave Ricky Williams an issue because Ricky Williams came out there with a dress on. So they was like, okay, cool. You know what I'm saying? So he already came out there, he masculated black men and looked at that situation. Then he came back and said, I smoke weed. Like, uh, what, what's the what's the movie that just came out? The uh, uh, reggae star that just came out. Bar Barley. Bar Barley. Uh, yeah, he, he said, I smoke. He had the dress like Bar Barley before dress is really a thing. He had all that. He had, when, once he put the dress on, they was like, oh, yeah, Ricky. We love Ricky. We love Ricky. Throw this dress on, Ricky. And he emasculated, uh, the, 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 the emasculated all the black men across America and showed that. So, yeah, they was ready to give Ricky some dollars because Ricky Williams showed a propensity to be able to do anything to get those dollars, right? Except sign a great contract where Master P told him to hold off. Nah, you know, he wanted to get the money right there. Was, we all knew Ricky Williams was after, was after the money. Now, if he, had, so, if he had listened to Master P, they might have said they didn't black, but how dare you listen to this man? So let's be real. That's why I said they tried to black, they were really trying to blackball Lamar. I don't think they tried to blackball Lamar. I think what happened is I think they had issue with Lamar Jackson's image. I, I oh, let me say this. Let me say this. I understand what you're saying. I agree with you to a certain extent. I agree with you to a certain extent. But this is what I was trying to tell. This is what I was trying to tell the guys last year. Listen, Lamar Jackson is a phenomenal talent. Phenomenal. We can't say that. Now, except when he gets in the playoffs, then he turns to uh, Desmond Ritter. Well, ain't really can't really blame him. <laughs> I mean, my yeah. defense team. It's up to the offensive coordinator to sit there and put me in position. It's up to the coach to put me in position to win. Well, I, once, saying, you reach, like, once you reach the playoff, once you reach the playoff, I already know what you're gonna do. So the team's gonna scheme around and prepare for that. Well, that, I think it's up to him to put the team on the shoulder, and like like Patty Mac do. Like we act like Patty Mac don't 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 teams don't come from Patty Mac. Patty Mac puts the team on the shoulder. A lesser team than Lamar had, a lesser team than probably so San Francisco Lamar, had. So you want Lamar to throw the ball and catch the ball and then run it too? I think it, you got to do whatever you got to do to make it happen. You he know, can't catch the ball. Game. He can throw. He can't throw the ball to himself. He actually did in the last game. I think he did. No, no, no. That wasn't him. That was uh, the Texas quarterback that threw the ball to himself. Come on, man. You can't throw the ball. I mean, come on. Somebody got the receiver. You got to depend on. Let's be real. We, 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 we all know with Patrick Mahomes. Everybody know. Everybody in the stadium know when the Chiefs need something, they need this DR. They looking for who? They looking for, for Travis Kelsey. Yeah, he going to look for Travis Kelsey. But then he had the other guys harming that caught the game with the touchdown. Yeah, he but he know, but he know they. He knew he, could, he, he done got now. He got. We could trust. Him. Okay, and, and, and that's that's what I'm saying. So I'm saying Lamar has. So no receiver start okay, dropping right, passes. No. Of course you are gonna sit there and say, "Dang man, you were catching the ball, you no know, last week, or you been catching the ball while all of a sudden now y'all dropping these balls. What what's what's the deal?" Okay, I think this is the issue, but then you gotta look at this. One quarterback 
had lesser receiver talent than the other quarterback. One caused his receiver talent to raise their level of play, and the other did not. Right, the other gave what ten points in the whole game. Um, uh, ten points in the whole game. They lost ten points together. When the other quarterback did what he needed to do to win a Super Bowl, right? So we're not. And, and the issue is this. Let, let, let's keep. Let's keep focused. We're not comparing Lamar Jackson to Patrick Mahomes because so far there's no comparison. Would you agree? As far as yeah, that's why I said he's living in the wrong era right, right now. You take Lamar. You take Lamar pre. Yeah, pre Patrick. Or uh, after Patrick, right now you playing with another great person that happens to be playing in the same um um uh, uh, conference you playing in the AFC. It's hard that that the one three Super Bowl. You talking about two MVPs? This man won three Super Bowl. Uh, I, I get what you're saying, but at the same time though, he still listen. He doesn't have the Dak Prescott. Well, Dak Prescott plays for the Cowboys. Well, you got to remember, Dad Prescott, that's right. And and, and you got to remember that back in the day, but when Jerry Jones first took over, Jerry Jones sued the NFL about advertising. So anybody remember, that's how he got Dion. When he signed Dion that huge contract, also you start seeing Dion on pizza commercials and Subway. <laughs> so, yeah, when you want to talk about you were in Dallas, yeah, and, and guess what? Dallas is always a topic. You talk about the Cowboys 365 days a year. You should talk about the Cowboys of 365. That's a team you right. should talk about 365. Who else are you, right, you going to talk go. about? Who else are you going to talk about other than the Cowboys 360? That They're worthy of that. You know what I'm saying? I don't talk know about somebody who won the Super Bowl. <laughs> Hey, they were the, I was, and they started to be a topic for the night when we talk about the Marcus Lawrence talking about they got tired in the playoffs. That's how they got beat. And Michael Parsons had to go check up and be like, man, what are you talking about? We got to change the culture. But that's another that's another topic for another show. We're talking about Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson right now uh, is is one of the top. Would you agree that he's one of the top talents in the NFL? He is and a top draw, a top draw. A lot of he people, is. The, the, a lot of people were disappointed. They still watch the, the Super Bowl, but a lot of people were disappointed because Lamar did not make it. To the Super Bowl this year, a lot of people were disappointed with that, and and, 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 and a lot I, I know a lot of people that lost interest in the game. We still watched it. We want to see Usher. We want to see different things go on. We still. I watch think it. the key. I think but, the key. Like I said, it, it's sad. You're saying that, but he just happened to be playing in a time when you got another great player that happened to be in the same conference that you were in. But you think that like you, when you think, look at that like when you look at Patrick Ewing, as great as Patrick Ewing was, Patrick Ewing had me playing at the time when Michael Jordan was playing. Okay, but that don't mean you. he wasn't a great player. You just playing in the wrong era, bro. Okay, well let me ask you a question though. But do you think that affect this marketing dollars and advertising dollars? And what well, because you still see the me personally, me personally, what is affecting his dollars? The fact that don't remember you didn't know what you were getting. He hadn't played the whole season. Okay. The knock on Lamar Jackson was he could not play a, a eighteen, well, a sixteen game season. No, hey, before I left, talking about an eighteen game. Now you talking about eighteen game? Oh, he ain't gonna make it the whole season, is he? Don't forget, you had Vegas betting on whether or not Lamar was gonna play the whole season or not. All right, but he's still yeah. a, he's still a two time MVP though, baby. He's a two. Uh, do uh, do and how many? And how many MVP Patrick Mahomes got? Two. How many Super Bowl MVP Patrick Mahomes got? Three. How many Super Bowl MVPs on Lamar Jackson got? He's never got that, but I'm still. But wait, wait, wait. My oh, point like, exactly. Okay, why okay. he has not learned to slay the giant? Wait a minute, Michael. Jordan remember was, now, you wait, got wait, wait, remember. Wait, wait. Remember Michael now, was the even the, even Michael Jordan said it. We had to learn how to win. We okay. call Michael Jordan the greatest. I don't know why they call him the greatest. Y'all call him the greatest. The greatest. Everybody know, tend to forget. Listen, you know Everybody tend to, to forget that when Michael Jordan first got in the league, he had to learn how to beat the Boston Celtics but and the Detroit Pistons. You're right, but uh, Biddy, but this is but hold on, your country did to your own point though because no, I, wait, 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 wait. Even though Michael Jordan, he, even until 1991 when he won his first championship, Michael Jordan still was the face of the NBA. Even though you had Magic and Bird, Magic and Bird was on the die cloud. Michael Jordan had somebody to Jordan. We're talking oh, about a man out and dunking all over the place, doing all these dunks and scoring all these more, points. Yes, he was a face. Who's more excited Lamar, than Lamar, Lamar has field. done. I mean, Lamar had and Michael Jordan were playing games. Lamar had Lamar the last up to this year hadn't played in what? And the most games he played in the season was what twelve. Lamar Jackson up is the to most this past season. Hold on, 
Lamar Jackson is the, t is the most exciting football player in the NFL right now. Bar when though. he's healthy. That's true. That's true. I agree. I agree with that. I just, but, so that's the point I'm making, King. The up until this past football season, the last Super Bowl that the last MVP Lamar got between no time period, the most game Lamar has played in has been twelve. If twelve, right? But in a regular on. season. Listen, Michael Vick was a rookie. Came in, had a great rookie uh, second year. Broke his leg. Broke his leg. Now broke his leg. Came back. It was all video games. Doing everything else was all that. Doing the things that Didn't Lamar I just Jackson. Say Hold on, wait. And you and had, Michael Vick had an agent. Wait, wait. wait. And Michael Vick never, ever, 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 ever won a Super Bowl. The closest he came was with uh with with Dawkins from Philadelphia, and he's about to run a touchdown. Dawkins from Philadelphia laid the wood on Michael Vick, and he fumbled, and it was over with for Vick for right there to get to the Super Bowl. That was his best shot to get to the Super Bowl. After that, no more shot. And you know that, but we feel bad for uh, Falcons fans. Good people, Benny. <laughs> They're really good people. But you know what I'm saying. At the end of the day. I, it's you got I, I, you gotta stop making excuses and say hey there ain't no excuses the man the, I, I said the reasons were and I gave you the reason okay. he hadn't played a complete seat he had me playing the wrong era he hadn't played in the complete seat he, 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 he's been well is he is he is he is he going is he going to play is going to get hurt then he was trying to play ball him you talking about a man how oh, dare God. you not hire an agent to come talk to us He's you negotiating these contracts. Come on, man. NFL and you. Who else in the NFL got that, that don't have for agent? It's a lot of them. It's about seven to eight of them. It's but about, I'm talking about signing a big money about, contract I'm like this. Man. I'm talking about top players that, that did that. Who? Top players. Uh, Not the, like uh, him? Not the, like Lamar? Lamar uh, leave that number of them saying no. The, 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 that's not that's not a president. That's not a, that's not a president for signing a. He didn't have a he didn't have an agent when he signed as a rookie. I ain't signed. You still there? He signed a rookie deal. He didn't have, he didn't have an agent. Yeah, I'm here. He signed as a rookie. He signed a rookie deal. Yeah. Already... Oh man, I think I think we're freezing out. I knew what you were gonna sign him for. Oh. Everybody talk about they talk about us. We had you walk on the guy with trust. The songs I never said in the book. We good. Show me the list. Show me the list. Everybody talk about they the best. We the best. Everybody talk about they talk about us. We had you walk on the guy with trust. The songs I never said in the book. We good. technical difficulties there uh get everything back to where we need to be but we're back now to uh being where we're supposed to be things got a little bit heated there you know what i'm saying we got, we got a little interesting there with me and Biddy talking about the Lamar Jackson thing, and uh, before we had the technical difficulties, but we still here, we still here, kicking it, still talking about it. Lamar Jackson, why, whether or not his, uh, the issue is his image, whether or not last words. I didn't get a chance to give you last words on the last one before we move to the next All Star Weekend. What's your last word on why Lamar Jackson doesn't get the the uh, uh, advertisement dollars in the situations that uh, I think that it's going. coming. Okay. I think after this year, I think after this year, it may be coming. This year was kind of, you know, show me, prove me. So I think it's coming. But 
at the same time, I think also, like I said, he's playing it. I mean, look, look you know, I mean, we just have to face it. The best he could be right now is the face of his franchise. Right. He's, we say, you can't say he's the most exciting player when Patrick Mahomes is doing what he's doing in the Super Bowl and the playoff. Wow. Right now, Patrick Mahomes is the most electrifying player and uh, uh, exciting player in the NFL right now. That's true. So, 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 I mean, I got to give it to him. You got, you got him and, and, and you got, I mean, so, so it's kind of hard to say that when you got stars like Patrick Mahone is doing what he's doing, it, it's going to be, it's hard. It's hard for him. He, I mean, he, it's, I mean, I really do believe he could be the face of Baltimore, but I think Baltimore didn't really have that. Could he, really could he, did they finally pay him his money? I was like, okay, we're going to pay you just see what you're going to do. This was more of a, okay, let's see what you done did. So he can kind of prove himself this year and do what he did. That playoff, getting over, getting over the playoff is going to be something that I think he got to learn how to win. Could he be great later on? Yeah. Lamar could come right behind and be like, okay, eventually, yeah, this is what we're going to do later on in his career. Be like, okay, yeah, this is what we're going to do, but I'm going to do this thing, do this right here, and, and win a Super Bowl. I hope he do, but, I mean, you playing in the era with Patrick Mahone, who, who's just – Electrified. It's hard. I agree. I, I mean, I, I think I think it's a number of reasons why Lamar Jackson is not doing the things that he should be doing. I think I think one is his image. I think bigger than anything is his image. I think it, I, I don't think, think nothing wrong with his image. That's an excuse. Image. I, I, well, I, I mean, we talk about you brought on Allen Iverson last time where Allen Iverson played. The NBA lost money. They lost. They 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 were the least profitable other than Allen Iverson uh, tutelage. Until Kobe and Shaq stepped up and started really doing what they do, what, what they so started. You got to remember though. You got to remember though. Even, even doing, yeah, I remember though. Even doing that, but it wasn't because of Allen Iverson. You look at what you, what star power did you have in between that time? Man, you had Col you had a uh, uh, Vince Carter, Allen Iverson. You had uh, okay. Uh, Chris don't Weber, think Vince, at the time. At the time, you had Vince Carter. Don't think Vince Carter no was a dunker. Nah, no. let's be real. That's it. A dunker. Uh, I don't know, man. I think at the end would of the you, day, it, would it, you it, think about it now? You when Vince Carter's in the league during that time you're talking about, you would depend on Vince Carter to carry your team. What I no, yeah, I, I mean no, no. But, but, but hold on, wait, wait. So, so all he was was a he was a jumper and a dunker. When you're talking about star power, you did you, during that time. Allen Ives was all you had, and it was a black ball. We didn't want, we want no corn roll. We don't want no, yeah. That's why, think oh, about God. it. It was kind of hard for him. He told him. He had to break it in and do it and show them I'm not changing. I'm being unapologetically me. Corn rolls, rapid. They were like, hold oh, on. But then they realized, oh, man, this guy here. You, eventually, you had to get Al Alvin just to. Al Alvin eventually got the commercial. He eventually got what, got what he deserved. That's why I said Lamar is going to eventually get it. I don't think it's his image. I think it was a how dare you do this to us. I, I disagree. I you going to do this to us? I think it definitely has something to do with his image. I think his image had a big issue with, to do with it. I think that was number one. Why? I think, because because if you look at that, that's what I'm trying to tell you. If you look at the quintessential, because before even the injuries, before all this stuff happened, before the whole mother and the contract situation happened, the league, were, there, there, there weren't any advertisers seeking out Lamar Jackson. I don't think he. Had, I don't think we knew Lamar Jackson has. He had a little. He had a tech deal that might be in, end up being lucrative. But then secondly, other than having the tech deal, he had the bad cover, right? But other than those two, that's teams, it. That, but but look at look. Uh, look at uh, that Prescott. The that, that Prescott got slick, sleep no more. That Prescott got uh, uh, Chucky Soup. Uh, all these. That boys, Prescott. When you do an interview with that, when you do when it, I don't think it's his image. I think it's the way that he that he 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 presents himself. That's his image, Benny. That's no, his image. his image. When you talk to me, you talk about image. You're talking about you talk. You you trying to say there's something negative. I think of it as being a negative. No, oh, it's something he done did something negative in a negative way or something negative about him. I mean, it's the way he talk. But it's I mean, it, so I don't consider it's not. I don't consider that his image. Uh, I right, just so say he was. He, 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 he's. I consider his his. his how, how you put it? Your um. Your how, how you present yourself. You know say you have to sell yourself. When you go to an interview. You have to sell yourself. I don't think Lamar's done a good job of selling himself. 
I think it's it. That's a, and I think probably because of his image. <laughs> no, I mean, man, can't. I mean, he, he got a. He got like like. I mean, it's like um, Keyshawn was. I mean, one of the few times I agree with Keyshawn, he was right dead on it. He talked. He got that southern slang. He kind of talked that Floridian. He's a true Floridian. So you look at you like ah, oh, mm. the rest of the people you're talking about, you listen to them the way they talk. They always got it. when he does his interview, he sit there talk with his head down all this. So somebody have to work on his um, work on your um, what they call it, your um, Remember. your presentation. Right, right. Your presentation. Remember. Yeah. At the end of the day, Lamar Jackson has has to he has to make some changes. I think that the, the thing with his mom being his agent, I don't think that was a huge huge deal. Like people, try I to think make it was a black ball. You know what I saying? think it was. Uh, she still got that. She still got the deal done. He got the. He, get, he didn't get the guaranteed money that he did. And we, it, it, cause people try to make up all excuses. Guaranteed money is a mom being an agent. All those things. And we've seen examples of other people go in and make make um, deals with our agents. We see other people go in and um, get guaranteed money. So Kirk Cousins got get, was one of the first ones to have a guaranteed contract as a quarterback, and he ain't one jack, right? That but. Minnesota had no problem to give Kirk Cousins. Matter of fact, this is the last, I think last year. Right. Year of the right. You are, you are, you are correct. You know what I'm saying? You and are then correct. You, then you look at Deshaun Watson, and we can't say it's a, that's what I try to say it's an image thing because it's not really a black thing or a color thing because Deshaun Watson literally had women saying that he raped him like 30, 24 women come and say yep. that he said so, that's what I'm talking about. His image was bad. Him. Deshaun Watson image was bad. That's that what I'm, you say image. That's what I'm thinking about. You say image. He Deshaun Watson got an image problem. But uh, wait, but what they Deshaun Watson does do is he looks dapper in a suit. He presents himself as a person uh, that you could put behind and say, "Hey, if he doesn't if I done have, did all, if you done did all, he done did you. Hey, 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 hey. you, 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 you got you <laughs> secret messiah. You better look something. I mean, you got to do something." This is before all the allegations. I mean, let's be. Baby. No. Yeah, no, it wasn't before. You know, Obviously, this was going on at the same time. <laughs> okay. Obviously, this was going on at the same time. <laughs> so he had to look down. Hey, he was well, trying to get him a massage. His, but listen, <laughs> I, I, my point is this the outward presentation, some, uh, the outward presentation, being able to. Uh, uh, how you present yourself, right? You don't have the little. I used to, I made jokes about having the little dookie braids. I don't think it has to be a suit. Out, the man ain't got wear no suit. I, 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 but listen, I'm saying, but your presentation has to be a little bit better. You can't be walking around with the Al Faffle braids. You can't be rapping. You can't. Okay, can't that's it. With, I think. You know, no, I think what to me what he really needs to work on. He need to get someone to work with him on interviews and how he talk with doing interviews and doing that will help out a whole lot. So you think and selling you yourself, a, he his character. Not, not, I say care. His, 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 his. What am I'm looking for? His. You got to learn to sell yourself. He got to learn how to talk. And, you know. Yeah, I get you. I get you. So you got to get somebody to work on that. He need to hire somebody. You got the money. Hire somebody to work on these things. He needs an doing interview. Doing this to get better. He need a publicist and an image. Yeah. Image coordinator. So yeah, and, and that's no what I'm saying. quit saying image, man. Because quit saying image. image. I, I get what you're saying because you said, listen, we're not saying that Lamar Jackson is a thug. We're not saying Lamar Jackson is a bad. Individual. When you say we, image, that what most those most people. That's why you getting talked the way you no, talk. About. But, but you no, say no. image, image, image means different things to different people. You're right, and I agree. And I, and we agree. So we, you we, say we, image. We you say image. People automatically think, man, that man ain't did that negative. Right, and I agree. Like I said, other than a couple of tweets, he's never been in trouble, never been arrested, never been in trouble with the law or anything like that. But guess what? Neither has Draymond Green. So at the end of the day, you, you know what I'm saying? Hey, Man, yeah. go on with that. Go <laughs> on, got, stop it. He got one of the worst images. And, and he hasn't been right suspended now. by, he <laughs> hasn't been suspended like Draymond. <laughs> he has not. But what I'm saying is at the end of the day, and it's something that he has to work on. I think uh, he needs to get with a uh, public speaking coach. He needs to get with a publicist. Yeah, that's it. So, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. He needs to get with a publicist. And so, uh, acting to, coach, public, right. public speaker, acting coach, he'd be all right. He need to Shannon Sharp it. Cause you remember Shannon Sharp couldn't talk. Remember Shannon Sharp? Yeah, he, correct. He, 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 correct. He, uh, yeah, speech impediment. So he he, he could talk. But he worked on it, and he worked on this image. And guess what? Yeah. he is what he is. We're not. That's all I'm saying. Quit saying image, man. Quit saying image. All right, he worked on his 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 his, his like a presentation. In front of the his okay, presentation. All right, I right, with you on that. Okay, he worked on his presentation, and now Shannon Sharp is where he is, where he is, where he is today. He's still like the greatest speaker, you know. He still has that country swing. He's not, right? Yeah, but he, he do. Is, but it's gonna be there. 
But a couple of things you got to say about Shannon Sharp. Once again, I try to tell you guys, he looks dapper in the suit. You know what I'm saying? When he's suited up, he looks good in the suit. You know what I'm saying? He, he, he presents himself. Suit, ain't for he presents suit, himself. suit is not for everybody. It's not, but when he presents himself very Okay, well, then. So yeah, everybody yeah. don't wear suits. I can't make, I can't start wearing suits. I ain't wore a suit all my life. Uh, we're going to see it. We're going to see it. I, I, I called this out last year. People was like, I did like black people. People had all this. It's, not, it's the way. I told you, I don't think it was that. When you said image, they were thinking you were talking down on him as he's being, as he's having, him having a negative, a negative, like Deshaun Watson. Right. So like you say that, I think, things. I believe that. I can't speak to you, but I do believe that's what they were talking about, though. No, nah, that's why I want to make sure I qualify. We have, I have nothing but utmost respect for Lamar Jackson, right? But I, and I said this when I initially made the video that I, that I talked about. When you, when you, are unapologetically black like Allen Iverson, Lamar Jackson, Angel Reese, we'll talk about it a little bit. And when you are unapologetically black like that, it comes with scrutiny. It is what it is. It's got, it, do. Be it, it, it do. It comes with scrutiny. And you're going to be scrutinized. And sometimes when you're looking at certain organizations, certain organizations is not trying to make you the face of the but corporation you, or organization but, because but, but, of but how you, you must, but, but you say that, though. Some of the people you just named, Angel Reese got her because of her her persona, her her her, her, her 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 public her public appearance of her. She has a um she can talk well. She, she okay. Her presentation. Her presentation is good. All of that is good. She's it's better okay. than Lamar. Yeah, it is better than Lamar, but she's okay. Like, know what I'm saying? So that's what it is. She is worked with a she is worked with a publicist. She is worked with a a, 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 a acting coach, like, so she got that. Lamar, you got the money now. Work on it. Go get, okay. go pay yeah, some money. It's not an excuse, Lamar. We want you to maximize. maximize. He got the money. You find He got the money to pay he, somebody now. Uh, okay, he got two other. He got two, but we want him to maximize his dollars. You want him to get up to LeBron James. Uh, uh, and then uh, you may have some. And then that, I'm beyond with King. That's our goal. That's our wish for him. He may be satisfied where he's at doing what he's doing. That could possibly be it. Like it could be the fact that, like you said, I got that lucrative deal. I don't need all this right here. I want people. He may want to keep living a private life. Once you start doing all that, people all in your life can't go nowhere. Lamar yeah. may, may not. Want, he may just want to be that person that just, you know. I agree. I mean, I, I, I don't disagree. So, I, I just think he has so, a he has an image issue. Well, you know what say, he got it's a he has a, he, he has opportunity to go to do better, but of course, do he want to? Well, he's a young man, so he got he has a chance. And you know, like you said, he did get his contract, but we want him to get a few more. You know what I'm saying? We want him to maximize his yeah. future earning that he can do. Because when you see a talent like that, you want to wish the best. It is not. But he may be I, he may he may be waiting he may be waiting to do that. Um, I'm going to Disney World commercial. <laughs> hey, listen, we're <laughs> Lamar. We love you, brother. And this gets to you. Listen, we're not saying we're not dissing you. We just want to see you maximize. Your earning potential. That's what we want to see right here. He probably he's trying kid. to get the. He's trying to get. I want to go Disney World. I got you. But hey, hey, anywhere he, anywhere he, we put it. So he you, got about he got about two hundred forty nine million more than I got. So you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you need to maximize your suitcase. So he might do that. Listen, we're gonna come back. We're gonna talk about the NBA All Star Weekend. Uh, what needs to be fixed? And was Kenny Smith wrong? Everything. No. <laughs> was Kenny Smith Not everything. Wrong? Was Kenny Smith wrong with the most exciting, what people call it the most exciting part of NBA weekend? We'll be right back, right here on the King. Both shows. Green here on the Up the Great Green store, and I would like for you to tune in to the unnamed sports show with King and both every Wednesday. One man was out too. I'm gonna get in so much trouble for this. But y'all told me it's the Wild Wild West. There were no more rules. Y'all said we make our own rules. Some of y'all want to be the lead, you know what I'm saying? But I ain't going to work. That was just a prolonged action. So let me tell you how I really feel about you. I really feel like you. De Jour by King David Jordan. DJ B.I.G. Everybody 
they talk, but they talk about us. See how you walk on the guy with you. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back to the King's Bowl Show. We're here with uh, Vinny Jones, man. We're having a great time. I hope you guys had a great show. I hope you guys enjoyed it, man. People have been talking about the Lamar Jackson situation. You know, but they, they felt like they signed it with you. They feel like you, you was making some good point. You know what I'm saying? That's how they feel it, but we, 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 we don't. You know what I'm saying? We don't. Of course I'm right. <laughs> Come on, man. You can't be. It, it's, it's your presentation sometime, King. Uh, I, I, I hate you, man. I, I hate you. I, I, I just think at the end of the day. We it's your presentation. We, we, we need Lamar. That man ain't got to put on no suit. We, we, we need Lamar to step up his A suit is not for everybody. We need Lamar to step up his game. Step up your game, Lamar Jackson. He need to have somebody. He need to have somebody, a speech person. And, a, and, a, and a, he'll be all right. He got the money. <laughs> he he He's waiting to do that. I'm going to Disney World. No, he's waiting on. It may never happen. He's playing with Patrick Mahomes. It may, it may never, never happen. So you might need to get, you right. need to get to it now. But you might want to you might want to maximize as much as you can. Cause you play with Patrick Mahomes. It may, it may never happen with Patty Mac playing over there on the other side with Kansas City Chiefs. But let's move on. Let's go. Let's go to the the next thing. You know, the NBA came out this weekend, and they had a big weekend for the NBA. An All Star weekend with the NBA happening this weekend. It was a beautiful time for the NBA this weekend. Uh, how do you feel? Now, some people had some negative things to say about the NBA All-Star Weekend. Some said that this is one of the worst ones they've had in history. It is. Uh, after, the, after the huge NBA All-Star score that uh, was, was that broke records, you know, <laughs> that literally broke records. Awful, awful, awful. <laughs> and, 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 and but I can't blame the player. I can't. I can't blame the players, though. Okay. So, you know, but uh, this, I year's, can't. this year's game came in the East won the final game, 211 to 186. 211 to 186. Uh, Total is, lack of effort. Total lack of effort. Which is almost 400 points in the NBA game, four quarters. And it is, it is an issue. Oh, we got somebody calling in. Let's see if this young man can come in. So we, it, it was really a great situation and a great idea, the NBA All-Star Weekend that happened. Now, it started out with some uh, the skills competition that was lackluster, right? We had the skill competition that was, lack, 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 that was lackluster. Then we uh, came out with the three-part contest, which was kind of – it was one of the, the best part of the show. That was the, okay. be, that was the best part, three-part uh, contest. Okay, the three-part contest. And then in between the three-part contest, we're going to talk about the second – you had uh, Steph Curry going against uh, what Serena Leve- Leve- No, I, Sabrina uh, Askinu. Sabrina Askinu. Sabrina Askinu. So Sabrina, he uh, Steph Curry, Sabrina. Askinu. They messed up. They did one. The NBA did one bad thing with that. Hold on, hold on. I thought so. Sabrina Askinu and Steph Curry were both there, and they shot at Sabrina Askinu. And a lot of people felt like that was the best part of All Star Weekend, nope. especially Saturday night. No, nope. right. Nope. Then the last nope. thing they had was the duck contest, which was so, the judges messed up. Really, it, it really was. It was better, but you're right. The judges messed up. Then you had the All Star game, which was a crazy, crazy, crazy situation where the last All Star game, the commissioner game messed it up, and the score ended. The up commissioner, being, the NBA commissioner, messed it up. Right. The score ended up being two eleven to one eighty six, and a lot of people had a lot of negative things to say about the game and, and, and how the game was portrayed and how the game was uh, 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 shown. Awful. And Awful. what we have now, I'm going to see if I can get this to work correctly. I need the preview mode. And uh, before we get before we get it, I want to bring in uh, our host who had been here in a while. We missed him for a long time. That showed up tonight. Let's bring in Bo Brown. What's up, Bo Breezy? What's going on, man? Hold on, I can't, I can't hear you. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, you might need to unmute your mic. Wait, wait, that's me, that's me. Go ahead. How you doing, brother? Hey, I'm good. Gentlemen, how you guys doing? How's everybody? Hey, What's everybody up? Doing? How you doing? How you doing? Everybody oh, doing man, well. life is good. I can't complain. Hey, man, how you been? How, how's everything been, man? It's been, it's been a while. It's been a while. I good know, to see you, man. I know, man. You know, King, uh, you know, I, I did a little Valentine's thing. You know, I played Cupid at the household. And, uh, you know, we have those... 
managerial meeting every other Wednesday, so you know I don't get out of there to around about six thirty, seven o'clock. So it gives me a little time to get home and get settled in. But but next Wednesday, six o'clock sharp, seven o'clock sharp, I'm ready to roll. I'm back in motion. It's good to be here. How you doing? Let's roll. I'm ready to deep dive in, and um, let's make it happen. All right, good deal, good deal. Good, good to see you, brother. See, good to have you here. And uh, we go ahead and we get it. We're talking about All Star Weekend and what happened with All Star Weekend and the the situation that occurred at All Star Weekend as far as like the travesty and everything that happened at All Star Weekend with um uh, this, this the situation. Now, Benny, you were saying, I said that I felt like the three point contest and the shoot off with uh, Sabrina and Steph was the best part. You disagree. How did you feel about everything that was going on? What what, what was your thought? Three point contest. Three part contest was the best part of the uh, of the um of the All Star Weekend, followed by, to me, minus what the judges did. I like the idea that they got. I'm gonna be honest. I think they kind of re. They did not want that young guy from the G League to win bike the bike slam dunk contest. The judges were awful for slam dunk contest. Oh, wow. Awful. Oh wow. Awful. So you felt like you felt you felt like the judge, the judges uh pretty much gave an opportunity to uh. They, they, they were they, they were they were uh showing favoritism against man the fret the man first dunk should have been a 50. It was a did man. you see the first dunk he did even though it was on his second try man his first dunk was a 50. well i, I mean it was amazing um you know er, er, everybody put on a show uh matt mcclung came out there and i think a lot of people was looking at matt mcclung and, and, and you said they didn't want to win i thought the travesty it was two dunks i thought with travesty we, we start with that First, let's go back. Let's start at the beginning. The first mistake in the All Star Weekend, and Bo, I would like to go. Go ahead, Bo. You had you had been talking. Go ahead, Bo. How do you feel about All Star Weekend and how everything with All Star Weekend? Mr. Adam Silver, the Commissioner of the NBA, tighten up. That's all I'm gonna say. You got to put it together. David Stern read about now is rolling over in his grave. <laughs> David Stern had it together. He read a tighter ship than that. You know, right now the players are doing whatever they want to do. Uh, I didn't really care for the end season tournament myself, to be open and honest to you. Uh, overall, though, that I, really think that the All -Star weekend, I really think that the All Star weekend is probably something that is more of a jovial thing now than actually competition. Um, yeah, you know. Back in the days as a kid growing up, everybody wanted to see the three-point shootout in the slam dunk contest. And you wanted to see a competitive game on Sunday. But now, man, I think they had like a record breaker in so many three-point attempt shot, people shooting from half court, yep. 75 feet down the court. It's not – at the end of the day, the game itself on Sunday is more like just being in the house with a bunch of basketball players that are stars because the outcome doesn't matter and they're not going to put forth a great effort to try to perform to win the ball game. But once again, though, you know, the three-point shootout and the slam dunk contest, I mean, it's decent. It's okay, but it could be a little bit more competitive. I mean, I like the skills challenge when they had that in play. I, I felt like that was pretty good. Benny, uh, so, Benny, how did, I, 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 Benny, I'm going to let you go. What, what, he said he liked the skills challenge. He thought that was pretty good. I, 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 go ahead, Benny. I'm going to let you go. I'm let you go. Go ahead, Benny. I agree, Adam. I, 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 I'm gonna tell you what, why, why, why I feel like the commission of messed up at right now. You put in an in-season tournament where you was giving these players five hundred to win a team five hundred thousand dollars a piece. Mistake. Now you want these players to come back and play a All-Star game mid-season with no extra money. That money you put towards the end season tournament should have been towards the All Star game. Think about it. Major League Baseball had the same problem. They solved their problem by saying the winner of the All Star game, whatever side get, they get home field advantage during the World Series. That changed the whole complexity of the world of our NBA uh, in, uh, baseball All Star game. You need to come Absolutely. up with something. You need to come up with something. More money, whether it be more money or the winner of this game, East or West. It don't matter about the record. You get home. You get home court advantage during the uh, during the during the um championship. You got to do something because I'm like, bro. It was. I'm looking at that like, man, this was ridiculous because well, the competition wasn't there. But I can't blame the players when you're looking at, man. We got another thirty games to play. Go ahead, Bo. You you was agreeing with them. What, what were you saying, Bo? Go ahead. Uh, he made a comment about the Major League Baseball where the game was competitive. The AL East versus the versus the NL. I'm sorry, AL versus the NL, and whoever won that game got home field advantage. 
believe it or not, that game was played like a game seven of a World Series against a bunch yep. of All Stars. That was very competitive. The NBA should dwell into something like that. Maybe you know who win All Star game gets an opportunity to host, you know, home field advantage versus the East versus the West. So put it into play for one or two years just to see how it goes. I guarantee you, the fans will get their money's worth. Uh, yeah. so now, that, I, now, 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 the three point contest you were talking about with um uh, Steph Curry and Sabrina asking you, I, 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 I saw what Kenny Smith was trying to go with that, but she was shooting with a girl with a female with a girl with a female ball. But the only thing I think they should have happened with that, I noticed the look on her face. She won't think she was too pleased. I don't know whether they flipped the corn or how they decided who went first or who went second. And I think that kind of did it. It seemed like they told her she had to go first and still was going last. Well, I, to me, if you want to make that if you want to make that equal, do the corn flip on TV where we see it, everybody see it, and it's fair. But I got a feeling. I'm not saying it would have happened, but if they would have shot in different order. It could have been different. <laughs> you think you think it would have been different? Could have been different. different. It could have been different. Oh. Look at, you go back and look at her, go back and look at the expression on her face when they were doing the interview. They talking about she was going first. Man, not she was going first. She had to look like you know. I, I really don't want to go first. I want to go second. They, so it looked like they told her she was like you going first. <laughs> I, I I think at the end of the day. Um, my, my perception is this. I think both of you guys are wrong. The most um, interesting thing about our star weekend was not the skills challenge. I did like the Steph Curry, um, and Sabrina. I like the Steph and Sabrina shootout. That was cool. The three point contest was cool. The duck contest was, ah, uh, man. Um, celebrity all star game. The skill, the skills competition. Nah, man, let me get it off, baby. The skills competition was decent. But when it came down to it, the celebrity also gave us the best part of the whole the whole thing. The, the, the Shannon shot against Stephen A. Smith, uh, Shannon's team women with 50 cent on the sideline. But boy, Michael Parsons winning the uh, the uh, the MVP. Beast uh, mode, beast uh, mode. Uh, went crazy. <laughs> uh, you had Canoe with the dunks. That, that I mean, it, it, it was a, that was the funnest part of the whole. You had a. a, a, a What's the other the 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 the, the YouTube guy getting mad because he couldn't get on the game, he couldn't play, he couldn't get on the on the floor. That was one of the most exciting and probably the funnest part of the whole entire All Star experience for me for King. I I thought that was great. Go ahead, boy. King. I got, a, I got a question. I got a, okay. A question. All right. How how in the world we're talking about the NBA All Star game and some type of way. You wind up filtrating the Dallas Cowboys in here. Because they were talking about the world. <laughs> because the Cowboys. Because when you look at the Cowboys. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, Mark, hey, Mark, hey, I agree. Hey, I got to give it to King now. I was sitting here thinking about that too as we were talking. Like, and I forgot to say that the celebrity All Star game and Michael Parsons will be tonight. He, be he was straight. He straight ball. He straight ball. It just so happened that he plays for the Dallas Cowboys. Boy, it's just a, <laughs> he bowled, man. A little small coincidence hey, that he played but, for the but, Cowboys. Hey, you know, hey, hey, hey boy, he got to win. Benny he got to win something. He got to uh, win something. He ain't gonna better win at his own sport. We had to get something. Hey, at the end of the day, I, I, hey, you, you got to know. You got to know. At the end of the day, you got to know what's going He's on. He's a champion. <laughs> uh, see, now y'all taking it a little bit too far. You're taking it a little bit far. But let, let, let me say, oh my at the end God, of the day, I am only setting tears off of that one. Hey, listen, <laughs> it's a bit too, all I'm saying is this. They, the, the, he got the, a trophy. He got, he got a trophy. He got an MVP. And he showed, listen, listen now. He showed what, what, what really, really, really happens when you have a, a, a team that, that that's out and putting in uh, 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 good work and play it together. Now, this is my issue. Uh, the issue I had with the All Star Game was simply this, and uh, y'all may not agree with me, or y'all y'all may. But my issue I had with the All Star Game was this. I think at the end of the day, when you see, uh, uh, I, I agree with what you and Benny said. 
I think the players are not interested because they don't see the uh, the benefit of putting forth their best effort during the All Star game. Now, the issue that, that that you got that a lot of people won't bring up is this: the problem with that is this. Neither are the owners. The owners aren't the owners aren't worried about that either because the owners are saying, "Hey, that's my investment. I really don't want them going that hard. I really don't even want." We've had some we've heard some issues that some of the owners have been griping about some of the players playing too much. You know what I'm saying? And you know, especially the ones that's um, uh, 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 going for a championship that can contend for a championship. So you have an issue. It's kind of a door edge floor because you have the N- the NBA PA saying, "Yeah, it ain't really worth it," and then you got the owner saying, "We kind of agree with them." It ain't really that big of a deal. We do know this, that when, when the money is involved and it's more reputation is involved, and we're going to see how the end season tournament proceeds past this year. Counseling. Right? So we, we'll see how the end, end season proceeds past this year and how, how interested people are going to be net, in it next year if they continue to have it next year. But at the end of the day, it's really no benefit for anyone involved that the All-Star, that the All-Star game is playing. The best thing that they possibly can do for the All-Star game, I agree, they can't throw more money at it, but they probably need to move it to the end of the season. And that's probably, that's probably, you know, you had that little, you had that little weekend, but that's the Super Bowl kind of blah, 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 blah. But they probably need to end it. it that might be the best thing case scenario. And then throw more money at it, right? So then you have a little bit more NBA after the season. You have a little bit, or right before, you know, you have a little bit more NBA, you get a little chance before um the summer league comes. You have a little chance to do that. But something has to be done. I think it has to be more than money, but I think money can be a big uh, a benefactor. These guys, these kids are not like the Jordan and Dominique and, and, and you know, the top players of, of yesterday year that will go out there and they wanted to win and, and showcase their talent because it is. It will make them a huge superstar. I think this is King. different. These kids are not trying to do that. They're, they're thinking about their career. And they I, already make I, gave you, I, gave you, I told you what to do. What's that? If the NBA sit there and do that Bay League baseball and say the win the All Star game, if you gonna keep the format East versus West, to me the most side part of the NBA All Star game when they were picking their own teams, I love right. that. Right. But if you're but not going, if you going though, back to, we huh? talked about the fact that they changed they changed the format back to the old format that everybody so, so if you gonna go, so if you gonna, so you're gonna go, so if you gonna go, but if you gonna go with the East versus the West. Take a page out of Major League Baseball. This is how you get the owners involved. Say, no matter what your record, who got the best record, the winner, if the East wins the All Star game, they get home court advantage in the uh in, in the NBA Finals. If the West win, I bet you that'll wake them up. But go ahead. Or, or you can just say, hey, the winner gets a substantial amount more money than the loser, then that'll probably make them play a little bit more either. But to me, the way how I'm looking at it now, you got a player out there in the NBA who makes the all-star game, the basketball game that it is. There are three things that he's looking forward to doing. Number one, he wants to stay healthy. Number two, he wants to check cut. And number three, he want to have fun and score points. That's the only thing they're doing, getting paid, scoring points, and getting the check cut. Other than that, that's the, that's, that's the only thing that happened that's Sunday. It. I saw some of the games Sunday, but that's all I saw. Well, I think at the end of the day, that's, I, that's real, though. I mean, we can't we can't deny that that's the only thing. Damon was trying to get the MVP. Who? Damien Little made sure he got the MVP. I, I don't think it. Well, that's a question. That's another question. Before we get to the Katie Smith thing, that's another question. Who do you think should have won? I didn't think Damien Little should have won. I thought he played well. I actually was going for the ball for Indiana. I thought he, he he came and set the tone. He had, you know, a great game. You talking about the home crowd favorite. Yeah, Either one of them. You had co MVP. You had co MVP. Right. I think but you couldn't deny what Damien Little did. Hey. Yeah, he. It was Dame time. <laughs> Go ahead, Bo. Dame actually, uh, he did well. He put some key components up. He scored some points. And, you know, the thing about Dame is, you know, when he's hot, man, he's hot. And uh, he's hitting them threes like free throws. You know, him and Steph Curry, you know, I would love to see just those two guys at the All Star break in a one on one three point shootout. Just them two. That would be, that would Woo. be phenomenal. That'd be phenomenal. Woo. Now, Okay, so I'm glad you brought back up the three-point contest so we can get to we can get to what the hook's gonna be with the Kenny Smith situation. All right, so anybody that saw the uh the shootout between Steph Curry and Sabrina, what's her last name, Benny? You said it earlier. 
Eskinu, uh, Eskinu, something like that. Eskinu, whatever it is. Eskinu, right? Sabrina Eskinu and Steph Curry. You were you saw a great exhibition of shooting from two great Correct. players. Two great players. Steph Curry Correct. comes out. Um, Eskinu goes for twenty six points. Steph Curry comes out and hits thirty one. I think thirty one or thirty two. Twenty nine. Was it twenty nine? I thought it was 30. I thought he hit 30. 30, 31? I thought, I, thought, I thought it was 30, 30. Something like that. But Steph Curry goes back and he wins it. He had to get it. He had the boogie at the end to catch it. Right? He had to get it at the end because I was like, uh-oh. It, it was looking kind of scary. It was looking kind of scary. For it was. It was scary hours for a couple of seconds. But he came through and Steph Curry came through at, at, at the end and, 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 and put the man ahead. Thank you. We, we appreciate it. You know? <laughs> and she would have won. We never heard the end of this. Never heard the end of this. So the first thing we'll nope. say is thank you, Steph. We, we, we appreciate you, Steph, for doing it. For uh for for going for and, and making that happen because we needed that we needed that to go down and go and we appreciate you Steph for doing that. Now guys, my question is to you guys is, uh, how, Kenny Smith comes up afterwards, and Kenny Smith made some disparaging and it's all called disparaging the marks. I didn't see this disparaging the marks. Uh, Kenny Smith comes out and he says, <laughs> "Hey, that Sabrina should have been shooting from the girls' three point line or the women's three point line." instead of shooting from the male's three-point line. And, oh, what did he say that for? Oh, God. So then it's a bit back and forth. I think first, before he says that, Reggie Miller says that um, she's using, they, 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 they say that uh, he, she's using the girl basketball. And then Kenny Smith says, well, if that's the case, then she need to be shooting for the girl's three-point line, right? And then uh, uh Reggie Miller comes back and says, what? She, she should be playing with dolls now? That You can't put boundaries on women. And it became a, now we got to cancel Kenny Smith. He's a horrible commentator. We should get him off of the weekend basketball. We should get him off the NBA All-Star weekend basketball. He's, he's a male chauvinist, blah, 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 blah. How do you guys feel about the comments and then the backlash that Kenny Smith got from those comments during the show? We start, uh, Bo, you. Well, how do you feel? Yeah, when you have a situation like that, you know, listening to what you mentioned about Kenny Smith saying that basically she should have been shooting from the girls' three-point line, typically that's the standard. Women shoot from the women three-point line because it's a better angle, it's a better higher percentage shot for them. The only thing I can say is she may have agreed to shoot from the men's three-point line before the game even took place. Um <clears throat> But at the end of the day, if she's confident that she can shoot from the men's three-point line and make that shot, then let her shoot from whichever one she chooses from. Um, and and I don't know if Kenny meant that to be a male chauvinist or if he meant that to try to help her. Don't know. Uh, didn't under, don't know the intent. Didn't know the context of it. But at the end of the day, it's either or and whatever she chooses to do, then that's fine by me. Um, I think Reggie Miller might have went a little too far by saying the dog comment, which is probably not needed. Maybe he could have had a better choice of words, which probably would have put the fire out a little bit instead of building a fire. So you really have to think a, a little bit into cohesion or how he could have fit that with Kenny Smith conversation, whether if it was been for the good or for the bad. He could have leveled it instead of escalated it. That's my take of it. Benny? I agree. I think it's Kenny Smith is not my favorite commentator. That was bad. That was bad homework on his part because they said that she had agreed to shoot. She wanted to shoot from the male three point line because she said that was she shoot from anyway. It's just the game that that's. I think she practices from there anyway. That's what. So she had agreed to that. That said, if you done your homework, he would have known that was she agreed to. And I think the the um, I guess I guess it was the um. The um, leveling it off was okay. You shooting from the male three point line, we let you shoot with the female ball. So I don't have a problem with it. And she uh, and she agreed to it, obviously, because I think that what they got on about at first was this is what she agreed to. So why are you fussing about it? She agreed to it. I'm fine with it. So all right, so you you, you guys really don't have an issue, or or or, or, or you know don't don't y'all y'all felt like. You felt like his, 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 his comments were out of bounds, but um, you also he should have did like his homework. Okay, so you felt yeah, like he'd done his homework. He'd have known. He'd have known that she. He would have made a comment. He would have known she agreed to it. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, Kenny. I mean, at the end of the day, Kenny Smith 
to certain people, it's going to look like it's gender bias anyway, no matter what you say about the situation of the back and forth for the female three-point line to the male three-point line being prohibited on TV with both parties at the same scene, at the same half court. So at the end of the day, there's a pre nuptiation of that from a thought process. So he escalated it. And he should have just said, you know what? I wonder if she would have hit more shots from the women's three-point line. Maybe that's something he could have brought into it instead of saying, no, nah, she should have did this, she should have did that. Sometimes just a change of one word means a lot. King, what's your thought on it? <laughs> My question is this. I'm going to pull a line from a brother that I know is very intelligent very wise. I've known him all my life. He's known me all my life. You know what I'm saying? It's something that he said earlier in this show. Why was she a part of the NBA? Uh, 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 well, no, Bo, you said this. Why was she a part of the, of the NBA uh, All-Star Weekend anyway? She's not an All-Star. She's not, she's not a part. Why is she there? I don't even know why she's there. I don't know why she's shooting to begin with. Like, I don't know, like, what, like what's the big deal? Are they trying, like, are they trying to promote the WNBA with the, with, the, with the NBA players? Are they trying to prove a point to say, hey, women are just as good as men or whatever? And I think Kenny Smith and Ashley, was, he said something that a lot – and this is the thing about All-Star Weekend, too. We got to take it in advance. Um, Y'all know I pay attention to commentators. Benny, you know, we've done commentating before, right? We've commentated games for for, for Dublin, for Wilco yeah. County, different, day, different things. So we've commentated games before. So I pay attention and I study commentators. What I know about All-Star Weekend is – what they do, that's why they allow Kenny Smith, Charles Barkley, and all those guys to uh, Reggie Miller, them who aren't normally, well, Kid, Reggie is, but the other guys aren't normally the commentators. They allowed them to come out there to give a more realistic vibe, kind of street vibe, street hoop vibe to the All-Star Weekend to let you know that it's not as, as, as serious as the NBA game. You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying? So their commenta- the commentary the, com- the, 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 the commentary that they come and that, that the commentators do during All-Star Weekend is different than what you would hear in an actual NBA game during the season and everything like that. It's a lot more free. It's a lot more street-oriented. It's a lot more urban-oriented. It's all those things. So that's first and, so- that's, uh, first and foremost. We have to take that to advance. Secondly, uh, he said a lot of things that a lot of people said because you have to watch the games that people play, right? If Sabrina would have won that and beat Steph Curry, oh my God, the, y'all, you know what the narrative would have been. <laughs> women are just so the women can shoot just as good as men. Women can play just as well as men. Women, are, that would have been the narrative. So the fact is that, and, and I think Steph Curry even kind of knew that would be the narrative. Steph Curry was a shooter. If Steph Curry would have lost, they would that would have hurt Steph. That I, I, I hate to say this, it kind of would have hurt Steph. And it, it, it would have been a lot of guys have some things to say about Steph. Not, I'm not saying legacy wise, Steph Curry's always gonna be a great. But I'm saying there would be a lot of guys be like, Steph, what you do, man? You lost to a girl, bro. You lost to a woman, man. You're supposed to be the greatest shooter that God has ever created. And you sit here and listen and, and lose to the second creation. The, the, the second <laughs> his second creation was his woman. You said lose. So guys are gonna give that. I'm giving y'all the real. This is the real. Y'all ask me. You guys are gonna say that to begin with. So I think what Kitty Smith was trying to say was, hey, she had it, she had you, you cause what, what was the narrative? I, I listen to stuff and I pay attention. And, and, Bo, I see your eyes. I see you disagreeing with your eyes. You ain't got to say that. I can tell. But I, the narrative before the end of the thing was, oh, she scored 26 just like the rest of the, the – where the Damian, that, Damian Lillard shot, shot 26. So she could have been in there with the men, right? The men, she could have been in there with the men shooting 26 because she shot 26 like Damian Lillard shot 26. She could have been in there with the men, right? And that was, was going to be the narrative, right? And it just so happened – Somebody said, well, yeah, she shoot with a girl ball. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No, they, they, it's like she shoot with a girl ball. And it's like, so it's not apples to apple. It never was. But people were going to make the uh, people were going to make the analogy and they was going to make the similarities to say it was apple to apples when it never was apple to apple. It was apples to oranges. And what Katie Smith said, hey, if it's going to be apples to oranges, you should have really made it apples to oranges. And then, yo, it is what it is. But you was, y'all were trying to make it apples to apples and it wasn't... <laughs> Apple, uh, it wasn't apples to apples, it was apples to oranges. Well, should I say peaches? Peaches is probably a better. Apples to apples. <laughs> apples to apples. Apples to apples. If you get the analogy, I'm trying to say apples to peaches because they weren't the same. She's doing, she's having a female. Yes, they basketball. were. She had a female. Don't make no difference. No, she's stupid. With. I understand. She shoot with a female but, basketball. She but, shot from the NBA. She shot from the NBA three point line. But, but this is the thing. If, 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 if Benny. If I put you in the boxing ring, 
and, and, and you and you box it against me, and I get one bricks, and I give another boxing gloves. I expect somebody to have a fair, a fair advantage. She had a different weapon. That, that nobody, she didn't have bricks. She, she, she didn't have bricks. Steph Curry used to weapon. shoot. They shot with the ball. They used to shoot with King. She, she shot my father. But it's not. It's the same. So you said, "Hey apples King, apples. go ahead." Hey go King, ahead, hey, I'm gonna say this right here. If she win that three point shootout against Steph Curry, if I am the executive marketing director for Spalding Basketball, I need a commercial. I need a Definitely. commercial with her and Steph. I need a commercial. It's time to get paid off of it. I need a commercial. Let me ask you a question, King. Okay. You said it was a trap. That was a travesty. Don't you think it's more of a tragedy for a G League player to win the NBA in uh, dunk contest the no. last two years? Okay, that's this, more of a tragedy to me than her being Steph Curry. Hold on, it, it an is, NBA G Leaguer. Hold on, it is, it, it, it is, but this G okay. Leaguer. Listen, I get is winning the NBA slam dunk contest. Okay, two years in a row. Okay, okay. That's <laughs> worse than her being Steph Curry. No, no, because he was in the league last year when he won last year. He was with the Philadelphia No, he that, was. That, he was in the G League. Not last year. He was with the 76ers. He was in the G League last year, King. Yes, he was. Benny, listen to King, me. Look it up, King. All right, hey, listen to me. The man last, was a G Leaguer last year. No, he year. was not. He was signed to a ten. He got contract. signed after that. No, he was he was signed to a ten year ten year day contract before the dunk contest, and he participated in it. Now that's why he had on the Seventy Sisters jersey. Remember, now he had on the Seventy Sisters jersey during the dunk contest. He was a part of the team. This is the issue. This is listen to me now. And listen he won the G League championship last year and won and was the MVP of the G League. Okay, now there's a president for the, there's a precedence for this. What's the precedence for this? Do you remember the president for this? Anybody? Right, ABA. No. Nope. And stop this. No, no, no. It's a it's, it's a more it's a more common precedent for this. You don't remember, you don't know the precedent for this. The precedence for this is Craig Hodges. Craig Hodges won the NBA three point contest. And then the next year, he wasn't in the league, and they still let him put a, uh, compete in the NBA three-point contest to defend this championship. So it was a president already set for that. He was defending his championship. So the NBA Stop had already it, said, no. Am I, uh, Stop do you, want me, do you want me to pull the video? I, can pull I see what you're saying, you. King, but Stop the president it. You got president. a G. At the end of the day, you got a G leaguer but who won the NBA team. slam dunk contest. I agree. But but we already said we've already discussed two reasons. One, he, they allow him to defend his championship, and two, we talked about from the, at the beginning of when we start talking about the segment. The two was we don't have the interest of the main best dunkers in the NBA, and we don't have the interest of the best dunkers in the NBA to come out there and perform. And that that's why they have to go get G leaguers because the best dunkers are saying, hey. I don't want to be really be a part of that. Or the most popular guys. I think it's Anthony Edwards. Anthony Edwards was in there. You think he would have won if LeBron James was in there? You think he would have won if if if, if, if uh, uh, yeah he would have beat LeBron this year. Probably, LeBron I mean, thirty nine. I'm saying I'm saying like with, with younger LeBron. <laughs> maybe maybe Obi Toppin. Yeah, uh, Obi Toppin. You know his brother was in there and they, he got robbed because that dunk that he did that uh, 360 East Bay was amazingly nice. Hey, that I would I would have liked to time. see Obi Toppin in there against his brother. That would have been dope. They they robbed him on that because that dunk was amazing. He did a 360 East. The game. judges, a game. the judges were horrible, but they were they were trying to give because Jalen Brown did one of the worst dunks in dunk, dunk history, right? <laughs> he did the, the 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 fake. Uh, he tried to do the D Brown dunk over. Uh, oh yeah, when he uh, after he covered his eyes after he yeah, dunked the ball, yeah, after he dunked the ball, and then he jumped over, got it sitting out in the chair after everybody else is dunking over Shaq and Taco Fall and all the other guys. He dunked it over somebody sitting in the chair. That's one of the first dunks in NBA history. And they gave him a forty-eight on that. Gym. I was like, how, Sway? How? But at the end of the they day, I, I, I'm sorry, Benny. The, the president was the president was set for her, and the initial reaction was she could have shot with the guys. Here's my thing about that. If they want to make that fair to me, they should have flipped the coin and decide who go first on live TV. Her what shooting with a girl ball is not. I don't have a problem with her. Here's the problem. Now, what you were talking about is she would have been able to shoot with the female ball and shoot from the um from the WNBA three-point line. Now you're not comparing apples to apples. No. No, I, but listen. she plays with the. She plays with the. She, that's what they play with. Everybody got to play with the ball that they plays with. Okay. But this is the thing, though. So listen, listen. they got to shoot with the ball. They got to shoot with the ball they used to shoot with. Kenneth but Brunson. she didn't get to shoot on the line that she normally shoot from. She shot from the end, the same line step. She said, I'm going to shoot from the same line you want to shoot from. Candace Parker, said, Candace Parker said, listen, 
He said Steph Curry next. They want Steph Curry to come to the WNBA All Star game that nobody watches. They they want uh, Steph Curry to come to the. <laughs> that what they should have had it at. That what they should have. That what they should have did that at. Right. That nobody watches. Right. They, they 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 want Steph Curry to come and shoot there. Now, what you're trying your analogy, Steph Curry need to shoot from the girls um three point line against her shooting for the three point line with his ball and for the girls three point line and that's a fair analogy. Man, Stop Steph Curry it, score hundred points. Now, that's Stop what I'm trying to it, tell team. you. It's not Apple. Stop it, team. It's not yes, Apple. it is. All right, so let me say it She let shot me... from his line. Okay, okay. She so... shot from his line with her phone. Okay. So my question, Biddy, Biddy, I got one question for Stop you. Stop it. Biddy, I got one question. Steph Curry goes next year, this year. Steph Curry did the summertime. Do Oh, it's, it's a fall. It might be fall. Summertime, fall. He goes to the WNBA. It's summertime. WNBA. It's summertime. He goes to the WNBA, and I got to watch talk about WNBA because I got people to watch, and they get upset. They got kids in the WNBA, and they already they already pulled me to the side and said, hey, man, watch your mouth. When you talk about WNBA, my daughter's in the WNBA. I was like, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I understand. Right? He's a big brother. You know what I'm saying? Y'all both know him. Big Fredrick Baker. Hey, Baker, you know what I'm saying? Hey, I was like, he's like, hey. Why would you say about WNBA? My daughter's in the WNBA. I was like, yes, sir. I understand. You know what I'm saying? Don't be. <laughs> but at the end of the day, if, if if when they do that, if you give Steph Curry the women's three point line and the women's ball, does Steph Curry still win? Did it? Man, stop it, King. He probably don't. Man. You, bro, tell you what, he probably won't. I'm gonna tell you why, because he's not used to with the girls' ball. Absolutely, I was gonna say the exact same thing. I think that's not shoot. You shoot with a girl's ball. Yeah. I shoot. Yeah, his hands. He's gonna shoot too hard. Good. It's different. I can tell you, you ain't never played basketball, King. Uh, no, I, I, I played. I played it. I played it. They coach shoot. It. You shoot. It's different it shooting with a girl's ball than it is it with is, a yeah. It it's is. different. It is. Yes, but it is. I played it, coach it. And one of the games that I coached, one of the games I coached, they 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 messed around and had the uh, girls' basketball in the with the in the boys' game. And guess what? We the team that I coached was horrible shooters. We turned into lights out shooters that game that they gave the girls basketball. We you talking about day. boys? You talking about what? Ten U, eight U? No, wait, wait, no. Ten U. I'm talking about kids. I'm talking about guys that's used to shooting with boys with men's basketball. We talking about basketball. It ain't better that they got a men's basketball. You go, listen, yes, it I do. Mean, okay, so you're telling me, listen now, you're telling me if I met Steph Curry right now at the gym at Oconee Park gym. And you gave Steph Curry, we said, hey, all the ball we got is a female basketball. Steph Curry's not going to be hitting mid-court, half-court three-pointers. If it, after he warm up a couple of shots, you going to tell me he ain't going to be a projected. And, and I, not, I, not it's going to take a minute. Crazy. It's going to take a minute. Be, I, I think he'll be like Shaq at the free throw line. His hand will be too big for the ball. Man, Steph, Thank you. Y'all got to stop. That's Thank Steph, you. That's Steph Curry. The ball is lighter, King. I got, <laughs> now I got to get used to I'm used to shooting trajectory and get, and used to put so much pressure behind it. I got to readjust my whole game to it. That's Steph Curry. Listen, if you get Steph Curry a, bas oh, a man. man's basketball, a girl's basketball, a wiffle ball, or you get Steph Curry a soccer ball, Steph Curry going to make that thing fall through the net. That's how good he is as a shooter. That's how great they are. Okay. So y'all trying to tell me y'all trying to, uh, to tell me that man, y'all get that man I a think, women's basketball, I think, kill it. he's still going to kill it. I, I, I think you're looking at the, um, the psychology and psychological bearing of what he do on the night in and night out with a men's basketball. But if you change the scope, which the basketball is a spear, you change the spear and the trajectory which he has to shoot the basketball in. Now, then I think that he'll probably lose percentage wise hitting those shots unless the rim actually got bigger. But if the rim stay the same size and the ball gets smaller with his hand, which his hand is bigger and a smaller ball, it's going to be more difficult for him, for Steph Curry to put the ball on the trajectory like he normally does because of the size of the basketball and the size of the spear that's in his hand. I'm going to reach out to Steph and ask him. I'm going to like you, King, King, I'm gonna reach out to King, I'm gonna it's, ask him. I'm it's an analogy. It's the analogy you have. You take a baseball player, it takes them a moment to adjust to playing softball. Yes, right. it does. Because they're so used to that ball coming down at the and it's a smaller ball. It and takes them a minute to adjust to it. And the throw, the throw released from your wrist is not the same. Nope. For the baseball, the baseball wrist is more of a turnover. The softball wrist is more as a three-quarter throw. throw. Yeah, it's a, it's a twist on it. But you try to tell me, though, listen, listen. You give uh, – uh, <laughs> I'm saying he going to struggle. <laughs> So wait, 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 wait. He probably, and I'll be honest with you, he probably you want, he probably want, he probably wouldn't even do it. 
I, I'm sorry. You get back. I don't care if Barry Buzz, if you got a baseball, a softball, a wiffle ball. Baseball, Barry Buzz going to win. <laughs> Barry Buzz going to knock that thing out of the gym. You know, he's going to knock it out of the park. You know what I'm saying? It don't matter what it okay. is. You, you, you can throw a tennis but, but, ball. Barry Buzz going to knock it out of the park. You know what I'm saying? But you know he, why he's he, he going to knock it out of the park, right? Why is that? Because his eyes gained, don't change. Well, he, he gained like 45 pounds in two and a half years. I believe that alone. But I'm saying as a hitter, <laughs> I'm saying as a hitter, as expertise as a hitter, as, as expertise, he's a he's a he's gonna expert. struggle with a softball. He's, he's gonna struggle with a softball. He's a expert. he's gonna struggle. Listen, he's gonna I struggle. I guarantee you. I guarantee you'll strike out. Okay. He'll strike out the first. He'll strike out the first two, three at bat. Not at all. He'll strike out. Wait, wait. Yes. Are you, wait. Are you saying? Are you saying going directly from a baseball, a fast pitch baseball to a softball? Baby, it may it may throw a ball, but you gotta remember this. Dang, it's not. Barry, Barry Buzz, you you loft the ball up to Barry Buzz, that thing is going to the moon, to the moon. And I don't care if you throw it at 100 miles per hour or if you throw it 30 miles per hour, it's going to the moon, bro. It's going uh, to the moon. But can you have to understand the fact of it is that there is a difference? It is. I, I, I acknowledge that. But I'm, you don't I'm, know I'm, that. I don't no, think no, you know no. football. No, no, no. I know. I, I, wait a minute. First of all, I'm a letterman. In, first of all, I'm a letterman in baseball. I'm a little bit in football. I'm a little bit in wrestling, and I'm a shock you. I'm a little bit in uh, track, also. Yeah, that's a shock. Wait, 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 wait a minute, I got a question. You play baseball? I play baseball, yes, sir, for Dublin. What position? Todd Hogan threw one of the nastiest curveballs to me that almost made me crazy. <laughs> no, Get see, you. no, I was the second baseman. Who? Yes, I play baseball. Yes, sir. Todd Hogan hit me with one of the nastiest sliders ever. I'm talking about. I almost jumped out the box when he hit me with the slider. <laughs> did the did the ball actually hit you? No, it, it fell in. It was a strike. He thought it was going to hit him. I thought it he was. He got speedy. I, I did. I had to go out. That was my first time seeing that. But you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, man. Three, four, that's what I'm trying to tell y'all. I ain't just out here talking. I know what I'm talking about. I play baseball. Now you talking about that baseball. Hey, I'm, I'm glad, glad we got another baseball player in the house because yeah, I play I, baseball. I, I play. I've been playing baseball since a little G. I was, hey. My dad used to take us out from DPRD and pick up the whole neighborhood, and we used to go. My dad coached us in baseball. We I played baseball from little league all the way from T league all the way to high school. It wasn't I didn't play baseball my senior year because I was concentrating on football. And then I well, I played. I, I, mean, I played no baseball. I'm, I'm old school. When I was at Dublin, we didn't even have a middle league, a middle school baseball team. Uh, I got there in the ninth grade. Mate, get this. The only freshman to make the varsity on the baseball team. The uh, only freshman. It was I forgot. I want to say Brian Clark. I forgot who. Coach was. Coach Bill was the head coach. Yes, I was not a. Not a but I. Coach. But I. But you know, King, I was Doris the only freshman to make the varsity. <laughs> but never played. A, never played a game. Yeah. Uh, you say what now? The only freshman to make the varsity baseball team, but never played a game. Yeah, I, I can't say that. I, I was my junior year. I was still almost down to uh, junior varsity. <laughs> I didn't say I was a great baseball player, but I was nice. I was okay. I was okay. You know what I'm saying? I get on the base. You know, <laughs> that's about it. But that's real talk, though. At the end of the day, I think that when you go through this and you play those situations and you start getting into – and Biddy, to be honest with you, Kerbo wanted me to play basketball. And I was like, uh, nah, it was, it was too much. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to tell you why I didn't like playing basketball. This is going to make y'all laugh. Your dad probably wanted you to play too. My dad did. My dad was all over me about basketball. He wanted me to play basketball. He had worked out a deal with Kerbo. <laughs> I don't know how he did it. He had worked out a deal with Ker uh, Kerbo. <laughs> but this, this this is the thing, though. Now, I'm going to tell you why I didn't play basketball. When we was in the gym, we was playing, two things happened. <laughs> this, is, this is so embarrassing. Two things happened. The girls, the Chile was in there practicing, and we was in there practicing, and Kerbo said uh, two things, three things. He said three words. And three words, I said, this might not be for me anymore. He said, shirts versus skids. <laughs> and my man boots was going to be out there flapping. I was like, man, no, this is no, this is not happening. This is not happening. Not with all them girls in there. This is not happening. Yeah, shirts versus skids. And I, I ended up, on, I was like, Lord, please let me be on those shirts. Please let me be on those shirts. Guess what? I was on skids. And I was so worried running about my bad boobs. I was running down, running down the court with my bad boobs. I had a wide open layup. And I was slowing down where Tony Brown passed me the ball. I slowed down, worried about my bad boobs, went for the layup. And Ryan Taylor came out and sent my ball 
back to the football field. That's it. I thought about that. I wasn't playing basketball no more after that. I'm over with it. I'm done with it. It's only football, man. Oh, man. You shouldn't, you shouldn't have let it yeah, discourage you, it man. You should stay with it. Nah, man. It was over with, man. I, I was not going out there letting them girls see my, my stretch marks and man boobs. It's not happening. You know what I'm saying? I had a reputation to, to uphold, boy. <laughs> hey, man. My phone, about, my phone about to do D. Oh, uh, you ain't breaking charger? All right. So, all right. No, nah, I ain't breaking. Real quick. So, all right. Katie Smith, that y'all say he was in. Y'all didn't like it because he should have did his research. Um, I say I, I got what he was saying. It was between the girls and the guys and the situation that was going on as far as like the girls and the guys in the situation with that. I understood what he was saying and uh, how that was going down. And at the end of the day, I think it has to be. I, 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 I understood what the conversation was going to be when it happened. So I wasn't upset. I wasn't too uh, uh, disappointed with the conversation when the conversation happened. I wasn't too disappointed with the conversation when the conversation happened at, at, at that situation. So it was a good All Star weekend. They got to make some changes. They got to make some uh, 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 some 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 drastic changes to get everything going. And uh, we we'll see how it goes. We we'll see how it goes. Uh, are you looking forward to next year's All Star, um, Bo? If it's gonna be the same way how it was this year, you know, I'm kind of lukewarm about it to be open and honest to you. I mean, because I, I paid attention to it this weekend, this past weekend. But then again, I really didn't pay attention to it. I brushed across the TV back and forth looking at it. And um, it just didn't excite me to be open and honest to you about it. Okay. So it really didn't excite you. So, all right. I know you're ready for the baseball season. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm ready for some baseball, man. I'm ready to see what these teams are all about, you know, see what Arizona going to do as far as repeat. The Braves put up a – a stellar regular season. I want to see what they're going to do. My Yankees have been in the, the downtrodden for a while. I want to see what they're going to do, if they're going to come back up. And who's going to be the Cinderella? Who's going to be the surprise? And who's going to go on a streak upwards or downwards? It's going to be interesting to see. Definitely going to be interesting to see what happens with that and, and how that goes on and everything like that. I think we lost Benny. I think Benny is, I think we lost him. I think we lost Benny, but that's all right. We, maybe we get him back. But um, it's going to be definitely interesting to see what happens as far as um, with uh, All-Star Weekend next year and what happens again next year. We're going to take a quick, quick break. We're going to come back. We're going to talk about Steve Wilkes, Caitlin Clark, and we're going to let Bo give his uh, uh, his uh, baseball preview coming back right after this on the King Bo Show. Hello, this is Reba Green here, owner of the Great Green Store, and I would like for you to tune in to the Unnamed Sports Show with King and Bo every Wednesday. One man was found too. Yeah. I'm gonna get in so much trouble for this. But y'all told me it's the Wild Wild West. There were no more rules. Y'all said we make our own rules. Some of y'all want me to leave, you know what I'm saying? But I ain't going nowhere. That was just a below action. So let me tell you how I really feel about you. I really feel like you. De Jour by King David Jordan. BRG walk on the guy we trust The song is our name, it's in the book We good Show me the list Show me the list Everybody talk about they the best They the best, yes Everybody talk about they talk about us BRG walk on the guy we trust The song is our name, it's in the book We good Back here one more time once again and um we, we want to get into something that happened thank you we'll first thank everybody for watching make sure you guys like and subscribe hit the like button hit the subscribe button i know right now we're off of uh facebook but we are on youtube 
We all coincide. We've shared it to Facebook. We all X still. So we still have those things going on on um, Facebook. With Facebook, we will go back and share this. What's the videos off? We'll be back. So we appreciate you guys for sticking with us. Appreciate you guys for um, rocking with us. I want to shout out Benny for um, one of our analysts for coming through and, uh, and dropping some knowledge and, and really providing some 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 some, some hard hitting uh, uh, commentary there. <laughs> some hard hit commentary there. Bo, it's good for you to be back, man. Good to see you, man. You doing good? Oh man, life is good, brother. Can't complain. It's good to be back. Everything is copacetic. Everything is copacetic. So let's go ahead and get into this next topic real quick. We're gonna knock these nasty two down. But listen, at the end of the day, last week I don't know if you remember, Bo, a couple of weeks ago, uh, we were talking about the Super Bowl, and I know Benny was here. Um, the, this is right before the Super Bowl, and everybody was at. You was watching the show though. You was home. You wasn't feeling well. You was watching the show, and everybody was talking about. Who, which is she with? Man, I wish Biddy was here so I could talk about him. So we were talking about who's going to win the Super Bowl. We talked about the, who, who's going to win the Super Bowl. And while we're sitting there, I, I was telling them, I said, hey, I want San Francisco's defense to do, I don't care who wins, I just want San Francisco's defense to win. And Biddy gave me the bit. Oh, okay. Oh, now how are you a Cowboys fan and you're rooting for the 49ers? How are you a Cowboys fan and you're rooting for the 49ers? You can't be a Cowboys fan. I, really I heard that for I heard that portion of the show. I was I was listening when that happened. I heard it. <laughs> so he was going he was going to have about me being a Cowboy trailer root for the 49ers. But what Benny didn't understand was this. And I tried to explain to him, say, hey Benny, the issue isn't me being a Cowboys trailer and rooting, rooting against the 49ers. My issue was at the end of the day, I was rooting for my coach, Coach Steve Wills. And I had seen and I had saw how before they had treated him. And how they had, uh, when they went to Minnesota, and the vitriol that he had received and, 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 and the unfair treatment that he received, not only in Minnesota, he also received unfair treatment in Carolina. And, Absolutely. And unfair treatment he received in Arizona, right? And so I saw that all the unfair treatment that he's had all over the years, and I, and I felt sorry for him because if you know him, Bo, fantastic man, dynamic man one of the best men you can meet not perfect but one of the best men that you can meet and with that going on that 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 was the reason i said i want the defense to do well and i said because when i heard when he lost the game in minnesota and that's the big game that we was talking about when they lost the game in minnesota and he made that he did the zero blitz in minnesota where right before halftime and uh uh Kirk Cousins threw – well, it wasn't even Kirk Cousins. The, the quarterback threw the ball up, and the defender had a chance to intercept the ball and fell and slipped. The wide right receiver caught the ball and went in and scored a touchdown. And since then, guess what? Uh, it let the Minnesota go ahead and win. And I sat there and listened. And you could, my wife can attest to this. I sat up all night, and I heard the malicious things. I went – because you can go to um, – I stream sports on uh, not just – Hey, what's up, big guy? Where the crowd? How you doing? Uh, <laughs> so we, we sat there, and not only did we, uh, um, not only did I, 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 I sit there and I, I watch. I went on uh, Sirius XM, and you know Sirius XM has all the local stations and things that you can go and listen to. I went to 49ers chat and Sirius XM, and I heard the local stations. I heard the vitriol that was coming, and I said, oh, it's just a little bit of some racial undertones of what these guys are talking about. Just a little bit of racial undertones on there. And I, I, I watched it, and I saw the vitriol that came towards them. And then I saw the next week or so, we saw Shannon Shanahan say some disparaging remarks that normally coaches won't say about their coordinators and say that he missed he messed up. He made a problem. And, and then it got out that it was some disciplinary that happened in that situation, right? And it was a conversation that was had in, a, in that situation where Shanahan kind of passed the buck. So when I saw that, I, uh, I uh, off the rip said, Hey, we got to be careful. I want him to do well because I see right now that people are not going to give him a fair assessment, and they have not given him a fair assessment since he's been in the NFL, really, especially going forth from defense coordinator to head coach. And I said, I don't know if you remember this, Bo. I said, if San Francisco loses, they're going to make Steve Wilkes the scapegoat. I think I was the first one to say that. Out of all the other newscasters, out of all the other stuff, you heard me say it here first. 
that they were going to make Steve Wilson the scapegoat, and we had a whole big conversation on Shanahan is going to make him the scapegoat. And sure enough, at the end of last week, we get news that Steve Wilkes was fired. And I'm like, you know, wow. Go ahead, Bo. You know, first of all, let me say this about Coach Wilkes. I don't know him personally. Never met him. King, I know you and him got a great relationship back at Savannah State University where you guys interacted. He was your coach. You know him on a outside of football, a personal level, as a human being, a person. Uh, let me say this about the situation in San Francisco. Uh, you know what? I'm going to go back a little further. Me personally, I think the Carolina Panthers should have gave him the head coaching job. They played for him when he became the interim head coach. They played good for him. The effort increased. Uh, their football IQ awareness increased. They won more games for him than they won for the head coach that was in place. I felt like he should have got that opportunity. However, he didn't get that opportunity. But I'm going to fast forward now to San Francisco. The San Francisco 49ers, I know a lot of San Francisco 49er fans all over the world, you're trending in the wrong direction because you failed to make sound decisions in critical moments. It's trending in a bad way. Steve Wilkes came to that Super Bowl as your defensive coordinator, which I knew the writing was on the wall anyway because – a head coach don't make an assumption about an assistant coach to the media in a negative light throughout the regular season. It just doesn't happen. That's a lack of respect. The same thing happened over here in Ashburn when it came to Rivera. He said something in a negative light towards the enemy. He came out preseason. The players are they pretty much don't like him. They say he's too rough around the edges. First and foremost, you don't allow that to get out into the public if you're the head coach. You're putting a slight on your assistant. Now, I'm going to switch gears and go back to Wilkes real quick. These are the facts. And, King, I listened to you guys last week on this one. I wanted to chime in so bad, but I had a cold. Uh, it was actually – I think it was a week before last. Yeah, actually, right before. I had the cold. I wanted to chime in on this so bad, but I'm glad you put this back up today. So now I got a chance to say this. Let, let me. These are the facts with San Francisco 49ers versus – the Kansas City Chiefs. Steve Wilkes coached a better game than Steve Spagnuolo. Oh, without a doubt. He coached, he coached a better game. San Francisco lost that game on two types of conditions. Number one, you turn the ball over inside of the 20-yard line. You take points off of the board in the first quarter on a fumble. I'm not going to call no name who fumbled. We all know who fumbled that ball. You took points off the board. Those are three points you gave away by not holding on to the football. Right. The second reason why I feel like you lost that game, and it could be vice versa. The second reason to me really should be the first, special teams. Mm. You allowed an extra point to get blocked. One of the punt returners saw the ball, clipped one of the defenders, one of his own men heels. Instead of him diving on the ball, he tried to pick it up and run it. Kansas City recovered, scored a touchdown. That's 10 points right there. 10 points off of the fumble and also off the ball hitting the heel of one of the guys instead of falling on it. He's trying to pick it up. And then you add another point to it by the block extra point. That's 11 points. The game never goes into overtime. You easily win the game if you play sound football. First and foremost, all three of those mistakes had nothing to do with Steve Wilkes as the defense coordinator. Oh, zero percent. You have to put that on the head coach because it's up to him to get his guys ready. The team didn't even know the overtime rules. Shanahan, everything that you stand for as a coach, as a guru, a quarterback maker, fantastic. Fantastic. There's a reason why. There's a reason why one of the high-level staff members left to become the GM over here at Washington. He left because he feel like there's no faith in winning a Super Bowl with that type of general, genre, statistician, quarterback guru, well-known NFL coach. I don't think Shanahan will ever win a Super Bowl as a head football coach. Wow. Actually, he had an opportunity to win one as an offensive coordinator. He couldn't pull it out. I don't think it's going to happen in San Francisco. I'm going to say this. 
if they don't make the playoffs next year, I think he's on the hot seat. And I'm going to tell you why I feel like he's going to be on the hot seat. This is why. If you're a good football team, Ken, you know and I know, you're only going to give it your best so many times before you move on and try something new in the NFL because at the end of the day, time waits for no man. At oh, man. A football player who thinks that he can win a Super Bowl with San Francisco or without San Francisco, at the end of the day, somewhere his contract going to come up. And he's got to make a decision based on his business and based on his family. And his business is his finances. So their roster is going to soon change over. Debo is not getting any older. First and foremost, I knew you were not going to win a Super Bowl with Mr. Irrelevant. I mean, I knew, name a Mr. Irrelevant who has ever won a Super Bowl. I give pretty props. He's better than a Mr. Irrelevant. But at the end of the day, you were picked last in the draft for a reason. Because the scout report went somewhere to the left. So, so I'm going to say this about Steve Wills. Don't hold your head down. You coached a gem of a game. You coached better than the guy who picked up a Super Bowl ring on the opposite side of the field as a defensive coordinator. You deserve a good opportunity somewhere. Keep your head up. The sky's the limit. And you will do well. Because not only if since he got turned, the next interview that he sit down for an opportunity to coach again, the first thing they're going to say is, how you doing, sir? You coached a heck of a game against Kansas City and Patrick Mahomes. He did. And he just that's got, how it's gonna start out. He just got out Patty Mac. That's all that's all they got. He got out Patty Mac. I, I mean, I mean, he 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 coached the gym of a game. So he's Definitely. gonna get another opportunity somewhere. I just think I just think that he has to get an opportunity that is a right fit for him. A good team that is young, up and coming, and somebody who is actually embracing him with open arms to say hey you are our guy and i think when that happens for steve i think he's gonna take off and i think that happens probably next year in the nfl not not this season 23 24 but in the 25 26 season i think that opportunity will come for him maybe not as a head coach but somewhere he could shine again as a dc and i think i think he's gonna do very well i think he's gonna do well I, I hope he does. I hope he gets the opportunity to come back and, and, and try again to uh, get an opportunity to win a, uh, a a head coaching job and position because the one in Arizona was a joke. He gave him one year. Um, he came back and then uh, after the job he did at Carolina. But I'm kind of happy. Like I said, I'm not a huge fan of the Carolina owner. Um, he has to grow me. See how it goes. But I'm not a huge fan of his either. So. I think he kind of dodged the ball with that. I wasn't thrilled with him going to under Shanahan in San Francisco, but I did like the fact he was going with the defense that was already uh, pretty much established. And uh, but when you stop a person, I'm a, I'm gonna tell a story. I'm a music producer, right? And I was working with an artist. It was one of my 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 brothers. And I was working with the artist, and um, he wanted he wanted to tell me this. He wanted to, hey do it this way, do it this way, that way, this way, that way. And he was paying me, so I was like, okay, cool. I'm gonna do it exactly how you want me to do it when you pay me. Then he heard me do some other music that I had, I either for myself or for another artist, that I had freedom to really express myself and use all the years of experience and tutelage that I have, and education that I have, and I really was confident in what I was doing. And he was like, well, why mine didn't sound like his? And I was like, because you pretty much dictated and you tied my hands and made sure that I did things the way you wanted it. This is your vision. So I did exact. I gave you exactly what you paid for. I think I brought a mini back. So I, I, I gave you exactly what you paid for. So at the end of the day, those two things, those issues with that is why the the situation with uh, Steve Wilkes, I felt like he could have, he offered some things to the, to, the, to the team, the San Francisco 49ers. People add like the defense just went down here. They didn't, they actually had, better statisticals, they had some percentages thing, kind of like, they, people were going by, I hate these new ratings. I they, Listen, first of all, I don't, Bo, because I know you're an, uh, your, your, your analysis, I know you're an analyst, you know what I'm saying? I know you I know you crush those numbers, that's your, that's your speciality. I'm not gonna dish your speciality. But I'm just saying, like, they have all these other, you know, QBR and, and, and efficiency ratings and all this other stuff, where it's the percentages stuff to say, hey, he had a worse season than uh, the last defense coordinator, or, or it's just as bad. All those things were occurring, but at the end of the day, uh, the defense actually in other areas get, were 
a lot better off, and they did well, especially once they made the trade uh, during the middle of the season. Got that that that, that nasty boy from Washington. Oh my gosh! So these are the things that we 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 sit there and we see, and we see a lot of times with black head coaches, with black quarterbacks, with black things. We talking about Lamar Odom, uh, Lamar Jackson earlier. We see the remnants of racial owner or overtones that occur when it comes to situations like this. And when you're not in a position of authority or of, of power, you're kind of at the mercy of the person that is. And in this situation, the person that is, is Steve Shanahan. Now, this is why I don't, I don't agree with what everybody said. I, I, I don't um, necessarily, uh, 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 I, I have issue, and I do take issue, and I do take pause with what everybody's saying. People act like Shanahan is, uh, back your camera off for just a little bit, Benny. People think that Shanahan is 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 uh, 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 indis- indisposable. I was watching Michael Irvin talking. Michael Irvin talking about, man, you're not gonna get rid of Kyle Shanahan. We get rid of Kyle Shanahan. I want him to come to Cowboys. I don't. Shanahan is Shanahan is. He, you know, we try to win the Super Bowl, not get there, not just get there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We try. We actually try to win the Super Bowl. So at the end of the day. Uh, you have all these people saying, well, Shanahan is the guy to stay there and Shanahan is the guy to do whatever. But at the end of the day, until we actually can, you know, see him make that step, we've seen him fail at, 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 at other destinations, at San Francisco twice. We've seen him fail in Atlanta, those situations. Now, they got him to the dance, but, you know, overcoaching or undercoaching, whichever one you want to call it, has caused them not to win. So I'm not sure. And they're probably going to do him like, you know, a lot of they do a lot of coaches because they give a, a lot, you know, a lot of them a lot of chances. They give them a lot of chances. So, you know, that that's something we gotta do, Benny. We we, we have our analyst, Mr. Benny, back with us. Benny, well, how do you feel about the situation? Wilt's firing was the was Kyle Shanahan trying to save his job. I agree with that. If you think about, if you think about the narrative after the Super Bowl with Kyle, like you just said, he gets you there, he did this, he done that, but he can't win it all. And even when you go looking at why why did. Why did your team? Why was your team not prepared for overtime? They come out talking. We don't know the rules for over. We didn't know the rules for overtime, huh? So the narrative around the Super Bowl was all on Kyle Shanahan. He had to flip that script some kind of way and get that that, that, that pressure off of him. Or oh, we're gonna put it on the defense. Your defense did their job. Your defense had Patrick Mahomes confused the first half. I mean, they played excellent, excellent defense. It's just that you, you, the guy you playing against happens to be a, I mean, let's just say he's a generational talent. You can't deny what he does. You wasn't, He was not going to be denied. And your offense never adjusted to, um, actually, your offense never adjusted to, um, to Kansas City defense, in my, in my, in my, in, in my perspective. So you actually fired your defensive coordinator because all that pressure was on you about the decision you had made as the offensive coordinator. Uh, I, but uh, you did call it. King, you was right. <laughs> I, I, I appreciate that. I, pre- I appreciate that. I appreciate that. But what you think? No, at the end of the day, you know, yeah, he's a scapegoat. You can easily say that. I mean, because yeah. you got to – are you going to fire a coach who make it to the Super Bowl as a defense coordinator? Don't you know that there are 31 – that I'm sorry, there are 30 other defense coordinators who wish they could have been there? And so basically you've got the top two on the other side of the field, Spags and Wilkes. And all of a sudden, Wilkes is out because of – you can't say because of the game. He coached the gym of a game. So why is he out? And you can't say because of what you've done to the throughout the year. Because he got you to the Super Bowl. True, true. So why is he out? Nobody can really answer that question of why. Uh, I, I, so but we know why. To me, it's a personal issue. We know why. Well, it's a it, but but, but just look at it. They, they, they try, you're right. They're trying to blame up to my, when San Francisco spat up doing it. They forgot that when the San Francisco lost those games during that period, they went that losing streak. Forget about the offense now. Like they said, Kyle Shanahan is supposed to be an offensive guru. Actually, Brock Predator got exposed when that time when, 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 when McCaffrey and all them went out. He got exposed. Your defense, I mean, 
All of us played football before. We know the rule of the game. I keep your defense on that field long enough, I'm gonna tire them out. If your offense is not scoring, keep doing three out, three, three and out, three and out, that defense gonna eventually get tired. Yeah, yeah, in the game go ahead, go ahead, sorry. Go ahead, go ahead, and the game against Minnesota that they lost, which was Monday night football, they had McCaffrey that game. This is what I'm gonna say about the San Francisco 49ers. I talked to a guy who was a diehard 49er fan who's been a 49er fan for 40 years. I asked him a question. He's one of my employees. I said, Goodness gracious, is Debo Samuels that important to your offense? And he yeah. said, Yes. <laughs> so without Debo, they struggle offensively. So okay. you can't really just put it all on Wilkes because that means that the coaching has not made a plan B. And last time I checked, Kyle Shanahan is the head coach who is basically supposed to be the offensive guru. You got a lot of weapons. Unify them. You can't handcuff them if Debo's out. And he has done that. But now Wilkes is to blame? Man, I don't, nah, I'm not buying that. I'm not buying that. I think at the end of the day, we, we we see we seen this happen so many times, and it really occurrences when you have, like I said, when you have uh, black head coaches not getting the same opportunity, or black quarterbacks not getting the same opportunity as um, uh, white head uh, car, their Caucasian counterparts. I think at the end of the day, Steve Wilts, um, this is a bad look for the San Francisco 49ers. This is a bad look for the NFL. Um, as much as you know, we've had what what we said it was six coaches now, six black coaches in the league now. Uh, with the, even with the six African American coaches in the, in the league now, Steve Wilkes has shown himself to be something, and it's not just because I have a personal, I know him personally, and um, um, I've, I've had a past relationship. It's really because at the end of the day, when you see someone being treated unfairly, and you see someone being made a scapegoat, and I said it, I said they're gonna make him a scapegoat. I said, if he lose, they're going to make him escape. Well, I, I, I see it coming. That, that's the only reason. But Benny, you was giving me the business now, Benny. He's like, you said, oh, how can you, how can a Dallas Cowboy fan root for a San Francisco 49er fan? He went out real guy. And, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I said, I said, listen, man, if, if that brother lose, they're going to scapegoat him. They're gonna, before anybody else said it, you can't, you can't say King was copying anybody. I said, they're going to scapegoat him if he loses. I said, and, and true enough, and, and, and my scenario was even worse. I said, if he gets blows out, they're definitely going to give him the business. He co actually coached well, you know, to, for, for the majority of the game. And the defense probably got a little tired, like you said, because the offense wasn't coming through a sustained drive. Defense got a little tired. And you're playing against Patty Mack and Andy Reid, right? So one of the greatest offensive minds and one of the greatest offensive, co I mean, offensive players of all time, you go against both of those, and you keep getting them chance after chance, eventually somebody's going to break through. And hey, it's just – it's go ahead. I'm sorry, bro. Go ahead. I, I got a serious question. This okay. is the statistic statistician coming out of me. Oh, let's go. Are there – and maybe we can look this up some other time and present it at another meeting. Is there anywhere in the history of the NFL where head coach, defensive coordinator has been termed, given a, given a soft landing, after losing the Super Bowl – by less than a touchdown. I don't and, know that. And, 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 and on top of that, 25 points or less given up defensively. That's a good question. I'm, I believe that number is slim to zero. What was the question again? I have, 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 have what now? Go ahead, ask again, Bob. Throughout the history of the Super Bowl, how many head coaches – our coordinators, especially defense coordinators, have been termed or given a soft landing, giving up 25 points or less and losing the Super Bowl by less than a touchdown, by less than seven points. How many of those defense coordinators and head coaches have been termed? Nah. I probably think yeah, you're going to find that hard. Hey, and the sad part about it, I think, I'm waiting to see how long it takes him to find another job. See, that's what tells me it's personal. That, yeah, that white counterpart, that white counterpart would have been picked up by now. Because you got to do the math on that, King. We're talking about we're talking about a defense coordinator in the Super Bowl who gave up 25 points or less to a team that have already won two Super Bowls, and they lost that game by seven points 
and the game went to overtime. How many times have that coach been rifted from a head coach or defense coordinator? Have they been rifted after the Super Bowl? I strongly believe in the history of the NFL, none of those coaches have ever been termed behind something like that. No. I died. I died. No, they pray. A first, and a first-year coach. First-year def, first defense coordinator. Absolutely. Absolutely. See, if you want to talk about next-gen stats, these are the stats that really need to be talked about. And these are the numbers that don't lie. The question is why? Okay, you said Steve Wilkes did not do a good job for you in the regular season. Okay, he buttoned his shirt up a little tighter. He rolled up his sleeves a little better. He got you to the Super Bowl and coached a good game. So you mean to tell me that you're going to replace him with somebody who's going to give up less points next year in the Super Bowl? I strongly doubt it. I strongly doubt but, it. For now, we'll make it to the Super Bowl next year. My point exactly. My point exactly. So why are you and, getting rid of good and talent? For your, and for somebody to point about about one player being Debo being your offense and you can't and, and you struggling. Let's think about this now. Tyreek Hill was a big part of Kansas City offense. Tyreek Hill is with the Dolphins now. They don't want too much Super Bowl without Tyreek Hill. Absolutely. So they're making it work. Hey, they're making hey, King, it work. I'm, Hey, King, I'm, I'm going to call a spade a spade. I, I hate to say it. I'm going to call a spade a spade. I'm going to ask running back. So I know running backs. I studied them. I know who's who, why who's who. McCaffrey is a good NFL running back. But McCaffrey has a fumbling problem. It ain't just started in San Francisco. Yep. He had a fumbling problem over there in, uh, in Carolina. He had one in college, Stanford. Yeah, M McCaffrey <laughs> has a fumbling problem. Th that's the part that has never been addressed about him. Now, is he a good football player? Yes, he is. But he will call the football up. And I'm going to tell you one thing about a running back. I don't care how many yards you rush for, how many touchdowns you score. If you can't hold on to the football, to me, that takes away from your strength. I just think that you have – you have. Um, I just think that uh, it, it, it's, it's the NFL consistently – it's time that we think that we have any type of uh, progress that consistently show us who they really are. And I think it's, it's, it's not just, it's, it's something that we really have to, have to, um, we really have to really sit down and, and really, and really start discussing and, um, you know, really, really just, you know, we try to figure out what, what it is that we have to, we have to go on. You know what I'm saying? Um, I think right now it's just it's, it's, it's crazy that players and, and teams and, and coaches and, and, and that we still have to go through this. But I think that um, I think this is where we are right but, now. But it's also a shame, Keen, that none of his defensive player came to his aid to speak up against for him. Yeah, no, no, I'm yeah, not, no, I'm no. That too. That's a shame. You know what I'm saying? Like they're not gonna mess up the money. But you can't say, but they could have said he wasn't a problem. Our defense, come on, man. One thing about remember Ray Lewis was with when Ray Lewis was with the uh with, with, with the Ravens. What they did with they pride themselves on defense. They said, You give us a quarterback, give us 10 points a game, we're gonna win the game. You mean give us 10, hey, 15 I'm, I'm points saying, a game? Hey, I, I, I'm, I'm gonna say this about Baltimore Ravens and Ray Lewis and his team back in the days. I gave them the um, the omen of purple rain, R-E-I-G-N. <laughs> I will say this about Baltimore. Baltimore Ravens were a lot of – they were laid at Rodell to you. Back then they would. Back then they would. There's no way Travis Kelsey could have came into the AFC Championship game and pushed people around after the whistle blown the way how he did in that game with Ray Lewis out there on that football field. He probably would have walked back to oh, one of those hooks no, sideways. No, 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 no. He no, no, no. catch another ball. But but when but when you look at it from a perspective, that, though, and we got and that, and the next time he came across the middle, he'd have remembered it. <laughs> exactly. To me, to me, the NFL is watered down. I'm sorry. I, I just I just feel like the NFL is watered down right now, man. I mean, if you go back and look at some of those old films, man, you can't even tackle the way how you used to tackle back in the days. The Pittsburgh Steelers probably would never win another Super Bowl because they don't they don't change their style of play. 
Pittsburgh was the most physical football team in the NFL besides Baltimore. And that actually led them to winning a lot of playoff games. But they can't tackle like that no more. Now Pittsburgh is an afterthought. Well, I, I think I think you have to see this. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, it, it's 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 just you you can't you can't sit there. You can't just be, you know, um, we can't just sit there and, and just ignore certain things. Even Kyle Shanahan, we look at how Kyle Shanahan was 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 hired and became the head coach. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. He did, he became a head coach after losing and getting blown out and, and famously blew a 28 to three lead to uh, the Atlanta Falcons. You know what I'm saying? He was rewarded by becoming, you know, the the, the 49ers head coach after two losing seasons. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, the, yeah. three, the, the, the other defense coordinator before, when they lost, he, he, he you know, the, 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 when they lost uh, the Kansas City 31 to 20, right? And guess what happened to him? He became the head coach of the New York Jets. He got a head coaching gig. So all these things happen. It, it, it's funny to me it, it really it really robert sailor sailor was it sailor sailor said sailor sailor and, and he's on, and he's on the hot seat he yeah. is on the hot seat woody johnson has came out publicly said that he needs better production from the head coach and also from the offense in order for things to go real this year the way how he made it seem as if, if the jets don't make the playoffs this year sailor's out of there yeah. So say you know what I'm saying, actually lost and lost the Super Bowl <laughs> and then came back and get guess what? He became a head coach. Right? He became a head coach. So I, I think the NFL has an issue. They have a situation to do it. They something's gonna be doing this, and I'm sad and I'm disappointed, guys, that somebody like Steve Wilkes, the Ilk of Steve Wilkes and the man that he is, has found himself in a horrible, horrible position where right now he's out of a job. And possibly is out of the NFL to next year, unless something drastic. So, until uh, after next season, until so just teams are already filled up their their vacancy. I don't think there's a defensive yeah. coordinator vacancy available right now. So I don't think so either. So well, I think, no, there's uh, not. Yeah. So I think Tumman wish you to hold it. Oh, Pittsburgh probably wish they were here though. What you said? What you said? Um, Bo? Who did Washington hire for the DC? Uh, not I know Dallas hired Zimmerman. Uh, uh, Washington. Oh, okay. I, I don't keep up with them. <laughs> I mean, I don't either. But who would they hire? Because I know they, I know they hired uh, Cliff King, Kingsbury as their the coach. coach so brought in the DC. Uh, uh, brought, the coach already brought the coach brought in the DC. I think. Uh, <laughs> hold on, I can tell you in a second. Uh, Washington defensive coordinator. Uh, Joe White Jr. Joe White Jr. White Jr. is the former who is, secondary. Who was that? We we don't know. He's, he's a former secondary. Uh, he was a former secondary. Uh, Joe Witt. I'm sorry, Joe Witt Jr. That's how much I know about him. Uh, he's a former secondary uh I, I, coach and passing game coordinator for Dallas Cowboys. So uh, well, he comes for good. Well, I'm, he was on the on the Quinn. I've heard of him. Okay, Joe Witt Jr. He's really now, man. You know, what I'm saying he's now the. Uh, He's now the uh, the defensive coordinator for the uh, Washington Commanders. So I, 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 I got a question. I, okay. I, I got a question. I, I know this is gonna sound crazy, and, and King, no pun intended for the Dallas Cowboys. But you mean to tell me a defensive coordinator could give up forty two points in a playoff game and land the head coaching job? Yeah. And yeah. and a coach could lose in the Super Bowl and give up twenty five points to Patty Mahomes, and he's not employed in the NFL. I mean, I'm, what is wrong I'm, with the league? I'm just as baffled as you are. I, I am. I, I, I'm definitely, I'm definitely just as baffled as you are. That, that hey, happened. He is black, though. He is black. Who? Oh. Joe Witt Jr. No, he ain't. No, he's not. He's a white guy. He's black. Yes, he is. I'm looking at a picture of him. I got, you got different pictures. Joe yeah, Witt Jr. Him. is black. I'm looking at a picture of him now. Yeah, he is. He is definitely King. Good. Yeah, I'm looking at him. Look at him. Look at him. At Cliff Field, yeah. Yeah, Joe Witt Jr. But yeah, he's uh, oh, he's black, right? White guy. Yeah, the 1970. Oh, he's young too. I'm going to say yeah, I was 1978. 
Uh, yeah, y'all heard about uh, Justin Fields? Yeah, he's tired of being in, uh, hey, hey, in the trade room. The, uh, yeah, they're trying to you trade You saw him. that when he actually just took, took the Bears away from all of his social media platforms? Where do you think he's going? Honestly, I, I think he's probably going to stay in Chicago. I just think he's frustrated with the GM by the GM not saying, hey, you're our 100% guy. I think that's frustrating to him. And, and I think as a Thank result, you. you know, he's like, He's like, hey, I'm going out on vacation because at the end of the day, you're saying that I'm progressing, but at the same time, you're saying there's a unique situation going on where there's an opportunity to where we can capitalize on trading you. So Justin Fields is at the point of his career where, hey, either I'm your guy or I'm not your guy. There's no in-betweener in there. And I think that's a fair assessment for Justin Fields to feel that way. Let me be your quarterback or either let me move on. Don't don't hold me waiting in the wings. Go ahead, Benny. The best thing that happened to him is getting him getting getting out of Chicago. You think, you think, you think he should leave? <laughs> I'm being real. The best thing that happened to him is getting out of Chicago. You want him to go to Atlanta, the, the Falcons? No, they got the wrong coach. What? No, Falcons got a good coach. They, they may be all right. Hey, Benny, let me but ask you a question. What's that? What 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 do you think is the reason why? Chicago is is has got Justin Fields to pulling him from left to right, right to left without just saying, "Hey, you're our guy." What do you think the main reason is? Because Ryan Pace Coach. is their uh, he he's their uh, he's their GM and he's an African American. What what do you think the real reason is? I've always said that when, when team draft, and I think King and I we talked about this the other week. When team draft the black quarterback, when you drafting the mistake that teams make. They draft the black, especially black quarterbacks. You draft them, want them to fit your scheme. Also, you get them in there and say, "Okay, this is the scheme we run." Instead of you trying to say, "Okay, we're going. If I'm gonna draft you, I got, I got to come up with a scheme that that maximize that maximizes your capability and what your strong points are. That's what I need to do in order for us to be successful. They come in. This is our system. You got to fit into our system. They don't fit into their system. Justin Field has not. He does not fit into the system. Of that they won't. You have not surrounded this guy with, you have not given him anything to work with. He don't have a, I mean, the line, the receivers. I mean, what have you given him to work with? You basically, we drafted uh-huh. this guy, now you want him to come make, you want him to come, you want him to come be your miracle guy. It's not going to happen. You got to give I mean, him something. About, I mean, he, he's had like three different offensive coordinators and, and two head exactly. coaches. So you, ha- you haven't given him an opportunity to get comfortable, nor have you given him a good wide receiver besides the guy that just brought in last year. Other than that, Justin Fields hasn't really had the opportunity to grow and develop in Chicago. King, what are your thoughts about the Justin Fields situation in Chicago? I think they're not sure. I think he uh, he kind of falls in the uh, Lamar Jackson category. He may be a good quarter, a decent quarterback, but they're not sure if he's the place. No, I think Chicago is looking at eye candy. Oh, we got the ugly quarterback. We got the number one pick. We got to draft a quarterback. No, you do not. Uh, I, you do to me. Chicago do better draft than Marvin Harris Jr. Well, is he? Co- I've heard his name out there along out, with the is Bears. He, is he coming out? Yeah, he's yeah he's in the draft. Yeah. He declared. He declared. Yes. Yeah, he's in the draft. Okay, I'll just see if he can declare it. Uh, what's the? Uh, let me see something. I would say I I'll let you know if they should keep him or not. I go ahead and let you know what they should keep. Uh oh, they had the first overall pick. Yeah, he out of there. He's gone. He's gone. I'm out. I'm out. He's out of there. Yeah, they trade him. But hey, trade him and get. If get, I'm not get, mistaken, no, no Chicago. Uh, trade him and get something. No Chicago for, got um, two top ten picks. Um, I would trade him for now. The smart thing would do is get a lineman and get a wide receiver, right? Um, even though I do like DJ Moore as a number one in Chicago, I like DJ Moore. He's still on the contract there. I like him as a number one, or definitely a solid number two. Um, if you get Marvin Harrison, him and DJ Moore with him, and that tight end, that tight end is pretty good too. Uh, Schroeder, well, I forgot to Schroeder or something like that. He's pretty nice too. He's a young, he has a, a young tight end. I would think they need speed at the running back position. Uh, Chicago needs speed at the running back, but they need help on the offensive line. They need serious help on the offensive line. So if I was Chicago, I'm drafting tackle. I'm off the rip drafting. The, I'm probably dra- drafting a tackle or a guard, a lineman, uh, to help with the offensive line. 
If you don't, they'll probably look quarterback. But maybe the smart move for Chicago, maybe if they really if they really is about their life, you trade down. If you feel like Justin Fields is your, is your guy, you trade down, you get a couple more picks. No. And, and no. you build up. You build up. No. You trade. get if I'm build, I'm getting Marvin Harris Jr. my first pick. No, nah, not at all. Marvin Harris Jr. Because um, I got a weapon. You giving them a weapon. Uh, let me ask you a question. You, you got to work up with the Johnson. And don't Chicago have two first round draft picks? Uh, yes. Say, yes. 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 Don't they have two first yes. rounds? Yes. But you get, but listen, yes, they, they do. Yeah. The, the, the Chicago. So listen, you, can, you can, you can get an offensive lineman and a receiver. You can get both. Ah. Don't they, don't they also have like 60 to $80 million in cap space? They do, and I, I think this is they a, got this money. Is ulti- this is an ultimate rebuild, right? For um, this is an ultimate rebuild for Chicago. But at what I'm saying, y'all gotta hear, hear me. What I'm saying, they're they're going, they're looking at. I, I, I hate to say it, you guys, are, you guys are looking at me. They had the first and the ninth pick, okay? They had okay. The first and the ninth. Pick. All right, so uh, but I, I trade at, down. That's what I said. I said trade down, and I possibly could have three or four. First round picks, I've retooled my whole hey. team. If, hey. if I'm not, if I'm hey. not, the only reason you keep that number one pick is if you're taking if you're taking Caleb Williams. That's the only well, reason you keep up. that number one pick. I'm, I'm gonna say this: the Las Vegas Raiders have already played their hand. They've already said that they want to draft the quarterback. They'll move up, and if they've already played their hand to move up, then you can possibly trade down, give them the number one pick, keep two first round picks, and possibly possibly have two second round picks and probably three third round picks out of that. Right. I, I think I think they have an opportunity to really change their team quickly. Possibly trade down, get Talese Fuge, um, offensive lineman for Oregon State, an uh, awesome tackle. Go get him. You got an opportunity to do something that's fantastic. So I think you get that offensive line. If you decide to keep Justin Fields, I go get an offensive tackle because they need help on the offensive line. That's something that they're going to need. Help on the offensive line. I go pick up uh, the offensive tackle, and if I need to get a wide receiver, is the wide receiver is for, it's kind of you got some nice names down there. I like I like Marvin Harrison Jr. He's a beast. He's a stud. But I think you can find a sleeper at wide receiver. It's shown that with uh, uh, Uka Kua. It's shown that with different ones that you can find a wide receiver later in the draft that that, that uh, pay dividends uh, for you in the season. So if I'm hey, Chicago, Nicole. go ahead. I'm sorry. Nakua is a baller. He come out of nowhere. I right. mean, he come out of nowhere just took the league yeah. on storm. He's a third rounder, right? I think Nakua was a third rounder, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Nakua. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's yeah. a third rounder. Nakua was a third rounder. So, like, you know, I can say this. Nobody expected him to come in there and take the league like that. No, not at all. And that's what I'm saying. So, I'm saying, I think it's possible for you to find – a, a, I, I, I don't get it twisted. Let me say it again. Marvin Harrison Jr. is a game changer. He's a game changer. I put him up there with uh, C.D. Lamb and 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 those guys. You know what I'm saying? He, he's he's definitely a a force to be reckoned with. He's Marshes. So Marshes, if you know what I mean when I say Marshes, say that three times fast. But you know, uh, he, he's Julio Joneses. He's he's one of those guys. But at the end of the day, I think if you really sit here and you and you look at it, I think you can find. St- Maybe somebody with them having DJ Moore as a wide receiver there in Chicago too, who um, had the hand injury for a little while. With them having DJ Moore there as, as a number one, who they got from the Panthers last year, I think they they they, they have a solid option at wide receiver. I think you could find something to, to complement a little bit later. Build your offensive line, get you a back with some speed. You know what I'm saying? Because we've seen what a back with some speed does with A-Chain and different things. Get your back with some speed because you got a bruiser. And I think Chicago will be all right if they work on the offensive line, defensive line a little bit. They got the back ends to do what they need to do if they're going to go that direction. But I feel like they're in love with Caleb Williams. I think they're probably going to shoot Caleb. They well, Caleb Williams not going to solve any problem without an offensive line. You had the same problem. That's, a, that's what I said. That's what I said. It don't make sense. But I, like you said, I think they, they – I think like you said, Benny, I think they're uh, they're looking at the candy, the shiny new candy. They're looking at the shiny new car. And they, they they want they want the shot they do uh 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 Marcel uh Marcel they don't make it Marcel Lago anymore. They want the shot they do uh Mercedes and uh they may But the fuck Go ahead, I'm sorry. I'm just feel I'm asking them to trade. 
to who though? Where, where, where would you like Justin Fields to go? ATL. ATL. Atlanta would be good. Man, you got come on, King. Man, you got a lot of teams that that need a Justin Fields. You got these sorry quarterback man. Come on. Justin Fields is not a bad quarterback. He's just in a bad he's system. Not. Yeah, he's just in the wrong place <laughs> at the wrong I, I, time. I, I hear in Atlanta wants JJ McCarthy. Who? JJ McCarthy from Michigan. Well, who? who who's JJ McCarthy? The quarterback from oh, Michigan. Oh, we're talking we're talking. We're talking about the kid who throws seven yard outs to tight end and and hand the ball off to Corum and Elwes. I'm telling you, that's, that's, that's what <laughs> Are I'm you hearing. Are you serious? That, yes, that's what I'm hearing. They, I'm hearing that Atlanta Falcons is looking at. Yeah. If they, if they stay yeah. put at number eight, if they stay put at number eight, they saying that um, uh, Williams will be going first. They saying that um, according to mock drafts that I've been seeing. No. Um, no. It's not. Uh, we was ain't. We was not a guarantee to go first. They trying to the quarterback from North Carolina. Could surpass that, him to go on number one. That could that could definitely happen. Um, what's the difference between Drake May? What's the difference between Drake May and Sam Howell? What's the difference? I mean, you, you tell me. I don't know. They both they both play for the University of North Carolina. Uh, they both were there at the same time. They both come out of similar systems. They're both about the same build. So I'm trying to figure out who has Drake. They trying to say Drake got a better arm. It's his arm who strength. Who has he beaten? Who has he beaten in a top tier college football game? Nobody. But you, but you forget about you forget about who does the draft and who who does the draft board and all this. Right? Who does? I mean, come on. He Mel Kiper is not the best, most accurate. I mean, <laughs> he had to eat his words on a lot of people. So hey. Well, I mean, said, I, said, I just, I was shocked when I saw that, and I saw that, I was shocked. I'm like, who, who? Yeah, they said, they like, said, really? Well, they said, they said, listen, listen. They said, if even if Caleb doesn't go number one to the Bears, and Drake may go, they said Washington's going to get Caleb Williams. So they either one, the, the, the top is three teams, really four. Um, it's four teams that possibly can go for a quarterback in the top top ten. But Washington is looking at. Is it Washington is looking at um oh, oh, the uh, North Carolina quarterback? They looking at Drake May too. So it's four. It's yeah. four teams. So Chicago, Chicago said they can. They don't really need it, but they said Chicago is looking at the quarterback. Washington's looking at the quarterback. Um, I think New England should be looking at the quarterback too, but they they're, they're saying they might they may draft later. They better. Um, they, they better be. I think New England is the wild card. Minnesota's I think Minnesota's looking, too, looking for. Minnesota needs to look for a quarterback. I don't see them paying Kirk Cousins north of $40 million. I, 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 I wouldn't pay them north of $40 million. New York, I think the Giants, you got the Giants, they're going to need a quarterback. Tennessee really kind of needs a quarterback too. But I think they find they, got, they, they feel like they got the guy with Re Revis, whatever his name is, uh, Levis. Um, Atlanta needs mm -hmm. a quarterback. Um, then you got Chicago again. And the Jets possibly could be drafting a quarterback too. Jets going to need the Jets gonna need half one. league need a quarterback. Yeah, so, so uh, these guys stand towards the end of, you know, the top guys stand towards the end of the, the, the first round. You know, I think after you get fast, like, the first 10, 15 teams. Dallas you know, need a quarterback. <laughs> you know what? We're finna go. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, we thank y'all for watching the show tonight. We appreciate y'all for coming in, for giving us the Here day, we go! Us, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> We appreciate y'all for staying, stopping in with us tonight. Oh, yes, yeah, I hear a source. You know what I'm saying? Huh? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I hear a source fact. Yeah, you know, we appreciate you guys for, for coming in and tipping in with us tonight. <laughs> you know, we hope you guys enjoy. Uh, we we'll leave two, two things. Let's leave two things, two things, two things. Let's thank you guys for watching the show. Thank you guys for two things we're going to get to real quick before we, before we get out of here. Um, first, we want to thank everybody for... Uh, been a part of the show and watching the show. But then also we'll talk about Caitlin. Caitlin, Caitlin, Caitlin. The same way she broke the Vision One women's score record of Caitlin Clark becomes fantastic top selling college athlete in an IL. Caitlin Clark's breaking records. And I told y'all, I told y'all, I told y'all it was gonna happen. I told you. Asia Reese, I said, listen, man, listen. Two years age of Reese, I said two, three to four, two, two, two to four years age of Reese will be on Love and Hip Hop Basketball. <laughs> Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. 
Caitlin Clark is let's, it's taking over the lead by storm. It's ten thousand dollars to go see a ticket. They said that was was she the Big Ten? Was the Big Ten Big East? What was she? What, 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 Big Ten. Big Ten. They said Big, Big Ten conference is already. They're a couple of tickets short of being sold out two weeks before the event because everybody wants to see Caitlin Clark. Broke the record. Great, de- great girl. Image Biddy. She has the right image, Biddy. The right image. Bob, what do you feel, Caitlin? How you feel about Caitlin breaking the record, NCAA uh, I mean, record, and then also breaking the NIL records? Also. Hey, let me just say this right here. The kid is a great player. High school, she was all state for three years. Uh, she's NCAA, uh, first team All American. She's a fantastic player. Fundamentally sound. She can shoot the basketball. Hey, one out of every three shots, she's going to hit somewhere in there. Uh, I will say this about her. Phenomenal player, but I have one question about it. The system that she's in, the system that she's in, the way how the coaches evolve their offense around her, is it a winning formula? Because she's never won a high school state championship, and so far she hasn't won one in NCAA. Is it a winning formula with one player scoring so many points without five players touching the ball, scoring a lot of points, balancing things out? Is it a winning formula? I don't know. Like she got, she almost got there last year when they got to the the Elite Eight. When they got to the they Elite Eight, almost the don't. Game. They almost the don't count them before she was a hand grenade. <laughs> <laughs> hey, they oh. played in the championship game against LSU and they was down by twenty at halftime. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, and they so gonna be, the, and they, they don't, and she don't want to face South Carolina with Don Staley coach. Um, I ain't kidding. I ain't kidding. I'm gonna be honest with you. If they face South Carolina, I got Caitlin. I'm going with Caitlin Carter against South Carolina. Oh my God! Oh, I'm, sorry. Hey. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm on the bandwagon. I'm on the bandwagon. Hey, I got. Hey, I got receipts on that one. I got receipts I, I on that one. I'm gonna wear it. Listen, listen. And not only that, the way you guys were talking earlier, if they use a girl's ball, Caitlyn Carr, I shoot Stephen Curry. That's what you guys told me. That's what you guys tried to tell me last time. That's what you guys hey, tried to tell me hey, last as, time. As long as, as long as it's not for the men's three point line. As long as, <laughs> as long as it's not for the men's three point line, and she doesn't use the men's basketball, Steph Curry hasn't used the girls' basketball. Guess what? Caitlyn Carr's gonna beat Steph Curry shooting uh, the greatest shooter ever. You know, that's what y'all try to tell me. That's what y'all try to tell me. You know what I'm saying? But let me ask you guys that we gotta get out of here. Uh, Biddy, last question. Uh, Roman, uh, Cody Rhodes gets the main event with Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. Did, did, uh, oh no, everything just went crazy. Y'all see here? Everybody see here? Yeah. yeah. I hear you, King. I don't know what happened to everything. I just, I lost everything. Y'all still got everything out there? Uh, yeah. no, everything is going on our side. On my side, I can't no see anything. I got no but picture. I, I ain't got no picture either. All right, so Cody Rhodes um, is is out towards is out with. Uh, uh, let me do it this way then. All right, there we go. Cody Rhodes is out with uh, uh, gets the match with Roman Reigns, and The Rock is out. Benny, did WWE get it right by putting Cody Rhodes in the main event and leaving The Rock off the main event? Yeah, WWE outsmarted itself last year. What WWE should have did, they should have let Cody Rhodes run the belt last year. What it was, you had a toss up. Rumor was going around, he had a toss up last year. Well, not Rock was going to come back last year. He said no. He had that little move thing doing it in the business did. He wanted to come back in shape. But you back knew it was going to be a good possibility he was going to show up this year. You should have let Cody run the belt last year, got it out the way. Cody could have lost that belt sometime then. Then you could have had your Rock and Roman Reigns fight. But I will say what you finna get. This. I'm going to make a prediction for Saturday. What is it? Cody oh, Rhodes will beat Roman Reigns and Rock will turn on Roman Reigns. What? Rock will turn on the bloodline. You think? Wait, wait, wait. Did wait, you wait. notice Did you notice Friday night? Go back Friday night. At the end of the show, they threw up the one to get the Rock one. He did not throw up a one. He threw he the thumb up. Like That's he was right, doing, he like he was doing the thumb down, like it's gonna be. Think about it. Uh, Bo, do you watch wrestling? Think about it. I do. I'm a wrestling fan, but I haven't been into it for a while. I'll start chiming back in. But gentlemen, I got a tune out tonight. I, uh, it was a blessing to be a part of the team again. To be back and feeling good. Uh, no more Mr. Cupid until next year, uh, Benny. Man, I enjoyed you, man, your energy. 
hey you're fantastic keep up the good work king brother i gotta tune out for the night i gotta get up early in the morning i gotta hit that road headed down 295 and i-66 you know i do a lot of traveling so i gotta get up early in the morning brothers all right bro hey bro we appreciate everybody we appreciate you guys for for tuning in with us today we thank you guys for uh having the opportunity to give us an opportunity to entertain you with some sports to go through. We had a lot of technical difficulties today and I already know what's happening. But listen, the way that you can help that is this. Listen, if you know sponsors, if you know businesses, if you know this is different situations than that, that uh, would love to sponsor a great clean show with great clean um, uh, uh, fun, talking about sports, community, different things. Make sure that you get them in contact with myself or with Bo, and we can get this thing popping like and and cracking like We thank everybody. Make sure y'all like, subscribe. Biddy, thank you so much, my brother. Uh, Bo, appreciate you, man. Good to have you back, man. To everyone else, man, we appreciate you guys. We love you guys so much. Listen, remember this. Remember this. This year, 2024, we're striving. We're going to reach our goals. Guess what? Success looks good on you, and it's going to continue to look good on you. Y'all be blessed. We'll holler at you guys next time. Peace. Peace. Hey. Everybody talk about they the best. We the best, yes. Everybody talk about it, talk about us. Oh. We had you walk on the ground, we trust. We trust. Yeah. Our yeah. We in the book. We good. Yeah. Wild Wild West, there were no more rules. Y'all said we make our own rules. Some of y'all wanted me to leave, you know what I'm saying? But I ain't going to run. was just a long action. So let me tell you how I really feel about you. I really feel like you. Du jour by King David Jordan.